why don't we get in here? I, I, I guess we could do something other than listening to that song the whole time. But why would you want to? I took I took like an hour to get ready for the stream, and now that the stream is live, I'm like, let me set up the stream. <laughs> I realized, like, oh, I should put the chat in. I should have the thing cropped so it can be on the side. But let's get in here. Let's play uh, Solid Snake 2 for the MSX. Look at this sweet intro. Talk about the Snake Eater intro. How about this intro? It's pretty hype. Can you uh can you screen share OBS or something? Oh yeah, I should probably do that, huh? Or X split or OBS, whatever. OBS, get out of here. <laughs> I guess I should probably use OBS now, but I don't know. We used to uh We used to use X split because it featured deinterlacing, but we don't need that anymore because we got a sweet frame meister. Frame meister. I don't even know what deinterlacing does. Oh God, Jordan. Does it take an interlaced signal and turn it into a progressive signal? Oh, yes, it does. Okay, cool. That was easier to explain to you than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be like, ah, oh, Jordan, we can't sit here and have like a video science class. Try to catch up. Sorry, I, had, I was in remedial video science in high school. This looks like a serious weapon that they're showing us the schematics of. Uh-huh. It's very serious. Character support? Now let me I'm gonna make this small for a second. I'm gonna it's gonna be bigger again later. Alright. Ooh, listen to that. That's jamming. Yeah, there's, there's some fat square waves. So this is uh, Metal Gear 2, not Metal Gear Solid 2, just regular Metal Gear 2. So it's the it's the, the last Metal Gear game before it became solid, before it solidified. It was, it was still amorphous at this point. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, this one wasn't, uh, it wasn't ever released in America until the special edition of Metal Gear Solid 3 came out. We got some jank fake Metal Gear 2 over here. Yeah, we got the Metal Gear 2 that uh, Kojima disavows. Mm -hmm. Which he also does the NES port of Metal Gear 1. Which he also does of Twin Snakes, which is almost exactly the game that he made. It's like two games he made put together with like cutscenes that are different in a way that he asked for, and he's like, no. Mm -hmm. Like, how many, how many uh, HD re-releases of Metal Gear games have there been? And there's oh, one gosh. that they never, they never do anything with the original because it's a PS1 game, and no one wants to like touch a PS1 game. Yeah. And then there's one that's perfect for it, and they just ignore it. All right, anyways, I gotta, let me see here. Oh, that's right, game start. I keep, uh, I need to crop this. Here's what's what's going on Why it's taking so long. I need to crop what's going it. What's on? I need to crop the picture, but I can't because it's all black. Like I can't see where the borders are because just the whole game is black. Oh, right. Well, jump in there and then just pause it, I guess. Oh, good point. Game start. Original. Ain't no baby. Oh, for fuck's sake. I hate you. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. There you go. There's a crop game. Boom. XSplit's uh, crop interface looks easier to work with than OBS's. It probably is. This sounds buzzy. It does not sound good to me. It's got a little bit of a buzz, but I think that's like radio interference. No. 
Like it's supposed to be there? I don't think so. So I remember playing this for a few minutes when the special edition of Metal Gear Solid 3 came out, which is how we're playing it now. Or we're playing it on the HD version of that special edition. Solidi Solidifus? What was it called? Subsistence. Subsistence. You know, because it's Snake Eater. He eats things. Subsistence. Right. And, uh... It kind of seems... Metal Gear Solid 3, Sisyphus. It, it's the, it, when I looked at this before, it kind of looked like a baby game. I was <laughs> like, look at how uh, it's like it's a little bit like Metal Gear Solid, but only in the most cursory of ways. Mm -hmm. But now, after having just recently played all the way through the original Metal Gear 1, and then when I went to this, it was just like, oh my god. It is so different, and it is like so much more advanced. The original Metal Gear was like a like a poop from a butt. Was it? I mean, it was good for what it was, but. Oh no! Whoops. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Off to a good I start. I might as well just restart this whole game. Now you're good. We can skip the dialogue this time. Man, the MSX had a pretty good sound chip, though. It did, yeah. I'm, I'm honestly surprised. That's what made me think it was a different system than Metal Gear 1, because the Metal Gear 1 music is, like, is also a poop from a butt. You had no radar. The, the alert system in Metal Gear 1 was, like, uh... If you found, if enemies saw you, anywhere you went, enemies would just be trying to kill you constantly until you killed every enemy that was on screen, on one screen, and then it would stop. That sounds, uh, inconvenient. This was the one where they introduced, like, an actual, like, hiding system. Hmm. And you can crawl like this. Ah! That was an enormous ration. It took a little while for it to 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 start in this one, but this was uh, the Metal Gear. I because I think he made I think no no I must be getting it wrong. I think Kojima made like Metal Gear One and Two, and then went mm -hmm. off and made like Snatcher and Police Knots, and then mm -hmm. came back and did Metal Gear Solid. But this was definitely the game where like the Kojima story crazy kind of kicked in a little bit. Yeah. Because in, in Metal Gear 1, there's almost no story at all. It's like you f run into bosses, and they're just like, I'm Flame Guy! I'm gonna burn you up! And and then you fight them, and they have fire. <laughs> and like at the end, you learn that Big Boss, who you thought was like your commander the whole time, was actually the enemy, and he's just like, I sent you to get wrong information, now I'm gonna kill you because you got too far! Oh shit. Oh, no. oh shit. Oh shit. Fuck your shit. There we go. Yeah. What now? Glad to see the combat didn't change over <laughs> the 20 years of the series. Right. So I. It. At first, this whole system seemed really hard to me. Mm -hmm. It felt like uh, it was impossible to evade enemies. I realized what the trick was is that when they see you. Enemies will just start streaming in, like, infinitely on the screen that you're on. So mm -hmm. you have to run to a new screen, and then enemies will only trickle in from the entrance of that screen that you came from. So you oh, just need to, I like, see. hide, like, right around the corner, and then just anyone who comes in, you just smoke them. But anyway, when it, what I was saying about the the story thing, there was like almost no story at all mm -hmm. when, in the in the original, and in this one, it it kind of seemed mostly the same until I killed the first boss, and the first boss like revealed that he was actually the local resistance leader from the first game who was like on your side, and he's oh, like no. the, the U.S. government turned against me. They tried to bomb us. And the only person who saved me was was Big Boss. He's a wonderful man. You'll see when you meet him again. Like, 
Mm. And I was just like, oh shit. <laughs> like they got they got they got deep really quickly on Metal Gear. Though I thought that was interesting because I knew in Metal Gear One and then Metal Gear Solid, like one and two, they really only talked about Big Boss as being like a villain. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised that even early in Metal Gear 2, like the first time anyone talks about Big Boss in Metal Gear 2, it's that guy saying that he's like a wonderful man and he like he saved me. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like, oh, maybe Big Boss was never really... Because I always thought it was a weird shift that Big Boss was like this weird villain. And then all of a sudden in Metal Gear Solid 3, he's like the hero. Yeah, but, well, like, yeah, that's the thing is that uh, at some point... Um, Big Boss turned. Well, the thing was, I I was always waiting for that turn. Like, they kept making more games with Big Boss in it, and I was like, when does he become a villain? And then I realized, mm -hmm. I think I'm realizing now, like, oh, maybe the idea was that he was never really a villain. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point of, of Metal Gear, is that you can oh, never shit. know who to trust. Yeah, exactly. Cause I cause I know the other one of the other villains or quote unquote villains in this game is a uh, Gray Fox, which is the mm -hmm. guy that you the guy that you initially go in to save in Metal Gear One. So there's like the resistance leader and Gray Fox. I was like, man, this game seems to be loaded with like guys that were my friends but are now maybe my enemies. Mm-hmm. Well, because because you are this is the first game where you're Solid Snake, right? No, you were Solid Snake in the first one too. Oh, were you? Yeah. Okay. That one, he's a rookie. That one, Big Boss says like. Uh, Big Boss was like the leader of Foxhound and was also the leader of Outer Heaven, which was where you were infiltrating. And the story mm -hmm. was that uh, you Solid Snake was a rookie, and Big Boss intentionally sent him in uh, with the hopes that he could feed him false information about Metal Gear and then send him back out and then tell the, give the world like this false information. Oh, I see. Uh, but he was too good and he got too far. Which, if you then follow like the story of the rest of the series, like. M Solid Snake is a clone of Big Boss, so mm -hmm. to like send him in expecting him to do a bad job seemed kind of dumb. Yeah, <laughs> he he was he was the he was the perfect clone of the world's best soldier. Yeah. Well, not the perfect clone, Jordan. He only had the recessive genes. Oh, really? I thought that I thought that Snake was the was the best of the batch, and no, that no. Uh, Solidus and Liquid both had flaws. Well, he was he was one of the best. But if you remember, Solidus was the one who was the perfect clone, because that's why he looks exactly like Big Boss. He's got, like, even down to needing an eye patch, I guess. I don't oh, know. that's right, yeah. You gotta... That took me a little while to figure out. You have to punch the elevator controls to get the <laughs> elevator to come, which is kind of funny to me. But, yeah, I've been playing this on my Vita. I'd be playing... I, I know I told you this already, but I'm just repeating. I'd be <laughs> playing my own save file, but uh, even though you can you can supposedly transfer your save files between you can what you uh, I'm sorry you can transfer your save files between oh, the two okay. versions of right. of Metal Gear Solid 3 HD collection between the PS3 version and the Vita version, mm -hmm. but that transferring only applies to the Metal Gear Solid 3. Actu like the actual Metal Gear Solid 3 save files, not the save files for these two bonus Metal Gear games, which is a huge bummer. Whoop! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, 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 oh. Shit. See, like this. And no, no, okay. Oh fuck. <laughs> Not nobody noticed you're good. Oh, get back all in right, there. we're good. We're good now. Here we go. Oh no! Shit. Oh fuck! Oh man! Just sit like this. 
This was when my playing of Metal Gear 1 really took off, was I realized how easy it was to punch guys to death, and I was like, oh, I thought this game was impossible, but actually you just go around punching everybody. It looks like there's no more guards at all. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Gotta get that ration. So good. Gotta get that ration. Yeah, Did you this... ever play uh, Star Trek, the 25th anniversary for NES? Nope. Uh, it was really bad, and it had music that was a lot like this. Wait. Oh, for the, did you say for the NES? Mm -hmm. Never. Oh, no! Oh, no! No, go! Go! No! Now you're stuck. Shit. Oh, but if you if you get these loading screens to go to a different area, the oh no! I was gonna say the uh, the alert drops, but apparently not. Mm. I can tell you the most infuriating thing about these old Metal Gear games, though, is uh, that like like Metal Gear Solid One and Two, you get uh, access cards that give you access to different doors, mm. but instead of stacking, like they're all different. So I can't use Metal I can't use Card Two to get through Card One doors. So I have oh, to keep word. equipping different cards to go through different doors. It's like some hot bullshit. Well, th none of these cards use the salt in your body to transmit well, information. Exactly, yeah, that's the problem. Oh, I didn't get the gun. Shit, I have no gun. <laughs> that's a problem. Like oh, a thing oh no, did. get out of here. Don't, oh, no. don't want none of that. What was the red zone? That was uh, gas. I need mm -hmm. to get the gas mask first. I'm kind of playing off the, this out of, like, very recent memory, but I can't exactly remember everything. Can you do a no-kill run in this game? Uh, not of bosses. I think the first game you could do a no-kill run, including bosses, was Metal Gear Solid 2. Mm. Not even the first one could you do that. Though I guess technically... Oh shit, I need my, my infrared goggles too. Where are my goggles at? Let's go down. Uh, 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 uh. Dust. Not garbage, dust. Ashes to ashes. <laughs> Look at that fox, he's so happy. It's a, good, it's a good loading screen. Yeah, it is. Oh shit, get out of here. Look. Oop. Was that a compactor? Yeah. Shut down all the garbage mashers on the detention level. <laughs> Got some Pokemon in the water there. <laughs> oh, wait. Let me see if I can talk to this guy. What's his, uh, like, 34 or something? No, wait, 38? There we go. To... This guy, it's oh, Master, Miller. Master Miller. All he does is just, like, soliloquize to you about loneliness and shit. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Or he gives you the most specific but un like non-useful survival tips for this game. Like, uh... Like, you can always drink your saliva, but never spit it out because the enemy can see how tired you are and how long you've been in a place by studying the saliva. Always keep your saliva. <laughs> never drink more than 100 milliliters of water because it'll burn too much energy in your body because of the temperature difference. I mean, that was basically Miller's role in Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, right? that's you're right. Tell me about the Alaskan field mice, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Boom, got them goggles. Dem gogs. Demi -gogs. Them hot knocks. Right. Ready? Ready? We're gonna Ready. take this guy out. Go for it. When he comes back. Ah! <laughs> Expertly done. I can't use any of this. So that's. So you have limited inventory space? Uh, yes, but also I don't have a gun, so I can't carry any ammo. Oh, okay. I think I'm actually. That's how real life works, too. That's exactly right.
I don't know how much it's like this in Metal Gear 2, but I know Metal Gear 1 was one of those games where it started out like crazy difficult because of the limitations that they put on you, but then as you leveled up, like, uh, like originally you start out being only to, like rations, you know, will restore you to full health, and you start out only being able to carry three, but then every time you level up it adds three more that you can carry, so by the end you can carry 12, so you're like unkillable. And any it's a weird screen, way to do your difficulty curve. Yeah. Any any screen that has a ration on it in the original two, if you just leave and then re-enter, it comes back. So any place where there's rations, you can just fill up to full rations. Cool. Uh, what am I doing here? This floor sucks because it has the great floor mm -hmm. where they can hear you walking. Oh no! Uh. That's fine. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> Don't worry about, about it. it. Uh, I don't think there's anything left on this floor for me to get. Oh! Binoculars! Sweet knocks. You need those. So now I can do this. Ah, oh, I see. See that white dot? He's come. He's thinking about walking up. I know he is. Except then he goes to the left. This guy's gonna walk up though. Mm-hmm. Look at that dot just sitting there, scheming. Oh man, I'm so tense. Oh no, Before there's another one. Cut, the, my, there's another one that might come in from the left though. I don't know what to do. Watch oh that no. Guy. Oh shit. <laughs> Power walk faster, snake. Shit. Oh, nope. <laughs> Don't go there. Fuck. Oh, God. This is, this this is exactly sucks. what happened before. This sucks. Whoops. <laughs> That's cool. Oh no, oh no. Okay, cool. <laughs> <sighs> and they don't make genome soldiers like they used to. There are a few things in video games that are more relieving than in a Metal Gear game when the radar goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. You get the little ding and the radar, the radar pops back on. Oh, wait, no, I think we go up to three now. Punch that. Hey, what's Master Miller got to say? Let's find out. Thanks, Master Miller. So even back then, uh, yep. Metal Gear was breaking the fourth wall. There, there was this moment. It was like right at the very end of Metal Gear One. It's when you're you you have learned that Big Boss is the main bad guy, and you're about to come fight him. And he mm -hmm. calls you on the radio, and he says, "Turn off your MSX right now." <laughs> or, or for me, he said, "Switch off the power on your PlayStation Vita TM." Or really, they updated yeah. it. Yeah, they did. That's funny. Got my infrared goggles now. Oh, I see. You still gotta watch out for that uh, yeah, camera, that right? Camera. Oh, that was another huge turning point in the in the first game is when I got the cardboard box, and suddenly any camera or uh... oh shit, I can't get in this door. 
Oh, I just oh, no. remembered. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, oh, no. Was that not the right key? No, I need key two. I forgot. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. There was only gas in that one part of the room? Oh, I see. Once any, once I could just have, wear a box and stand still, and an enemy or a camera wouldn't notice me, that changed everything. Hmm. Should you, should you go get a gun? Yeah, I should do that. That's a good idea. What floor is the gun on? I think I'm gonna look up a map. I'm gonna. All right. Uh, I'll be honest. I've been I've been a, a little a little cheaty. With the with Metal Gear One, I was kind of like, this game's bullshit. I'm just gonna use every map possible. Techno Syndrome brings up a good point. Where'd that guy who went into the elevator go? Come on, man! Don't be that guy. Shut up. <laughs> Ugh. I'm just gonna open a map for every floor. Boop boop boop. And, uh, oh, the gun is outside. Let's go get that gun. Hey, gun. It oh, shit. Oh. oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna equip my rations, because if I die, I'm just gonna... It just, it, it checkpoints every time you go in an elevator, so... Oh, really? Whatever. Oh. <laughs> that always happens occasionally. I go to punch a guy and I miss, but he just keeps walking and I'm like, Oh, okay, nope. That's fine. Abort. Yep, just like that. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still getting a feel from like the punch range in this mm -hmm. game. Because in Metal Gear 1, it's like huge. Seems pretty inconsistent. I should fill that chat out a little bit more. Hmm. I haven't been able to pay uh -huh. much attention to, uh... I haven't been able to pay much attention to the chat. Lumberjack Bonanza's been doing a good job. Yeah, I see that. Oh, what the fuck? Get out of here! <laughs> Another thing that uh, that got me about this one when I first started playing it is that the guards actually will uh, move their heads without moving the rest of their body, which yeah. I was not prepared for. I was like, what the hell? That guy was looking in a totally different direction. I didn't realize he had turned his head to look at me, because that's oh, not how it was in the original game. That's, that's some next level shit, man. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh... Like Kojima disavowing like the the NES port of the original gun. game, yeah. <laughs> Kojima disavowing the the NES port of Metal Gear One is like stupid, but I can kind of see why he is uh, all grumpy about Metal Gear Two on the NES because mm -hmm. it seems like this one is definitely like a like a like an achievement. I think mm -hmm. he's probably pretty proud of Metal Gear Two. What's with that heartbeat? I've never noticed that before. Let me see. I'm just cheating, looking at my maps. Maps, maps, maps. Uh, 
Oh, okay. I could have gotten the gas mask. I know what to do now. We're good. We're good. Good? We're good. So will they hear your gun? Uh, they must because there's a silencer. Ah, so, okay. Honestly, I almost never use the gun unless I'm fighting a boss where I have to kill them because otherwise it's it's like no more useful than than punching people really at least it wasn't in the first one because it was so hard to actually hit anything with your gun maybe this one it's probably a little bit more uh, reliable can I go in here oh yeah <laughs> I, I haven't figured out what that room's for yet there's some computers it seems, it seems important like some though kind of, some kind of monitoring station something like that this is kind of cool. You can crawl into these. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Oh shit! Oh, no. Ah! Ugh. Uh. Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh. Whew. Let's call. Snake's Revenge. That was yeah. the that was the NES one. All I can remember about it, I mean, I've never played it, but all, all I can remember is that he wore orange for some reason. That really annoys me. <laughs> like, if you're trying to sneak around, why would you be wearing orange? It doesn't even make sense. Come on. Come on. This is some bullshit. The, I, the I hate having, yeah. Like it blows my mind that even in Metal Gear One and maybe even, I mean, a Solid One and maybe even Solid Two, they didn't fix that. Ah, oh, shit. Apparently, Jordan, you never finished Metal Gear Solid 3? No, I never did. I got about halfway through. Um, it was... It, and... it does drag a bit. It's definitely the longest one, and probably the the least engaging. I mean, like, I enjoyed... I really enjoyed the story, and, like, um, I thought learning more about Big Boss and The Boss was really interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, hey. Hey, it's this guy. What's up, dude? This is the scientist I need to rescue, but oh no, it's not! Uh, decoy octopus. That's another theme is uh, uh, you're always equipped with uh, older technology or something. Hmm. Black Ninja. NASA's ex Extraterrestrial Environment Special Forces. I, I unit. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What I think was funny is in the original version, this black ninja is called Black Color, which I don't mm. understand why he would be named that. I'm going to look this guy up on a Metal Gear wiki. 
I want more information Oops. about this NASA unit. Black Ninja's real name is Kyle Schneider. Yes. We learned that after the boss fight, Jordan. Thanks for the spoilers. Sorry. Ugh, this boss fight sucks. I hate it. The Extraterrestrial Environment Special, For in Special Forces. Uh, was a special forces unit secretly formed by NASA, which envisioned future conflicts in outer space. Great. The members of the group were technologically advanced ninja-like soldiers outfitted with experimental <laughs> flex armor and reflex-enhancing drugs. Perfect. However, the unit was disbanded before it saw action due to its controversial nature and was regarded as being too dangerous to exist. <laughs> Afterwards, some of the members fled to Zanzibar Island, where they participated in the country's war of independence. One of the members was the former was Kyle Schneider, uh, who was experimented upon after narrowly surviving the NATO bombing of Outer Heaven. Man, what a dumb thing that is. Oh, you died. That's that's sad. I died, yeah. I think, wait, did I lose my, my gat? Oh, man. Probably should have thought that out a, bit, a little bit more. You almost went into the elevator, too. You were like, nah, fuck this elevator. I don't need it. Yeah, I need this fucking elevator. Eh, fucking eat it. I don't know what this thing is supposed to be, this weird square thing, but... Like a proximity sensor, maybe? Yeah, it's. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Just don't touch the, the red. Don't touch that red. I pushed the, like, the D-pad messed up or something. That was, that was what we, we call horse garbage. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay, good. Everything's normal again. Yeah, this item stuff seems annoying though. Yeah, it gets it gets old. That's why I can never get into uh, Dragon Warrior. Did you ever play that? Yeah, I did actually. Just in the last year or two, I I played and finished Dragon Warrior for the first oh, time. Oh wow! I I couldn't last for more than an hour in that game because you had to open a menu to go downstairs. Oh man, yeah. There's only I mean the world is not very big, but there's only mm -hmm. one save point in the entire world. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you have to go back to the kingdom in the center of the map and talk to your king to save your game. You gotta update the king on your progress. Yep. But I did, I actually, I live-streamed me beating the final boss, but I have not yet... Oh, uh, I remember that now, yeah. I have not yet put that out. Maybe I should, I think I actually have to go to a different floor in the elevator, which is super dumb. Maybe we can, let's try to get a, an extra ration while we're out here. Ah. Fill up my health bar. Because this always goes well. Like this, me stopping on this floor to get this ration has never gone wrong, ever. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, 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 uh, 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 Hmm. Seems like a problem. Shit. Shit. No! Oh no! There we go. That's fine. 
We're all good now. Everything will be fine. Probably. Oh shit. Oh right, shit. You got it. No, you it's got it. the evasion counter is zero. Why are they still here? <laughs> oh, that was terrible. But we got it done, Jordan. That's what Salt Snake does. He he pulls it out. He does the job. So you got the gas mask. Got the gas mask. Got the rations. Got the infrared goggles. Got the gun, which is important. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let me. So you could. I go need more that ammo. That's with no gun. That's the problem. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. And also, that guy does this bullshit where you can never get close to him. He always warps away. So uh, if you run out of ammo, like you can't do anything. Cool. like some garbage, some hot garbage in that boss fight, I feel like. What the hell? Oh, shit. Fuck. Don't like that. Not a fan. Mm. And then enemies just pop out of the elevators, too, <laughs> by the way. Uh. Data load. Oh, wait, oh, oh, here's what we do. Here's what we do. Data save. Save that data. It's weird that it pops you into the the HD collection menu for this. It is very weird, yeah. I just realized I've been playing in the XSplit window this whole time. I should probably plug in my actual monitor. Pardon. <laughs> And instead, I just unplugged my computer monitor. Ugh. God, I hate plugging in cables. Yeah, it's awful. For, uh, for Christmas, I'm asking for a, uh, a USB switch. So that I can have my condenser mic hooked up to two computers at once. What? Yeah. Wow. It, it, it's like Wait, thirteen dollars on Amazon, what? and it's a phys it's a physical switch that you plug a USB device into, and then it uh, splits it and sends it to two different locations, and you press a button on it to tell it which computer you want it to be attached to. Nice. Yeah. I just accidentally unplugged the DVI cable on my monitor, and then I plugged it back in, and it's not seeing my monitor <laughs> still. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, the chat's gone on XSplit. Oh, whoops. Hey. Ah, crap. I gotta refix all this. That sucks. Bummer. Otacon, the chat is missing. <laughs> Oh, you need to reset up the X split window. <laughs> what? Yeah, sometimes X split fucks up and you have to fix it. <sighs> Although technically that was not X split messing up, that was me unplugging one of the monitors in my computer and my computer going, ah, I only have one monitor now, what do I do? Right. Anyways, I just saved my data and now I just load my data because it only Literally. saves, it only saves to your elevator checkpoint. Oh, I see. Gonna go back in time. That's how we do it. This is very dark. The game does not actually look this dark. Well, I mean... It does look dark, but not as dark. I should probably, you know what? F, F this. F this S. Uh. 
What F? Bright, brightness. Having? Let's. Oh, I see. Bright it up. There we go. That looks more like it. Is that on the Frame Meister? Yeah. Frame my. Uh, I should just be plugging my PS3 directly into my Black Magic because I, mm -hmm. I don't need to reprocess 720 into 720, but I'm just doing it because <laughs> it was easier. Right. Uh, so it doesn't look quite as good as it should, but hey, whatever. What's double 720? Yeah. That's like 1440 or something. Yeah. That's Why did I come here? Thing. Ammo. Oh. We're getting more There's, ammo for the gun. There is not ammo on this floor. Why did I do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This D-pad on this controller is kind of messing up a little bit. Hmm. And it's not because you were playing it in X-Split? No. Maybe not. I mean, just a little bit. Maybe the, uh... Apparently, this is actually not the MSX version. It's a port of, I think, like a cell phone version or something that they put out. Oh, in really? Japan. Yeah. So, Weird. like, if you see all the um, all the portraits in here, they're actually redone. So, Solid Snake. This looks very much like your your traditional Solid Snake as you know him to look, mm -hmm. but uh, he didn't look like that in the original. He he looks like a. Uh, just like some weird 80s action movie hero. I, like, they, if you look it up online, there's like um, action movie actors that like every character in the game is very clearly modeled after. I think the general consensus is that Snake was like Mel Gibson in some movie, in Lethal Weapon mm. maybe. I don't, I actually don't see the resemblance, but man. But like uh, Big Boss is very clearly Sean Connery from some movie. You know, one of those Sean Connery movies that Sean Connery was in. Right. Probably. He probably doesn't look like Sean Connery from a movie that didn't have Sean Connery. Well, I don't know. They're, they're, Sean Connery's in a lot of movies that don't have Sean Connery. Fuck your shit. Yeah. All right. Aw. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got to level up for that. But yeah, the Frame Meister for uh, for games that are that are older, like uh, you know Super Nintendo and stuff like that. Especially if they're mm. systems that support a SCART cable, you cannot do much better than a Frame Meister. It's pretty awesome. Hey, if you've just got 400 bucks lying around that you don't know what to do with, <laughs> I recommend the Frame Meister. Import in in available only in Japan. <laughs> I think you'll really appreciate this, Jordan. It comes with this remote to operate it, and the remote has like a hundred buttons on it, and they're yeah. all in Japanese. But there's this one guy on eBay that buys um, English translation overlay stickers for the remote, so you can buy one for like ten bucks, and you slap it on over <laughs> the the remote, and it will have English for all the buttons, which is what that I did. That is such a weird specific thing, because it because the Frame Meister is just kind of like recognized by the like video file video game community as being like one of if not the best upscalers for classic video games mm -hmm. that's so weird that they don't expand then oh shit i think i think it's such a niche market that like the the people in america that really want it get it as right. i did but then again, yeah. I guess I guess you know you can't you can't find the people in English speaking countries that want it if you don't market it to them. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can rely on forums to an extent to do your marketing for you. But yeah. here uh, I'm putting in our in our Skype chat uh, a link to all the character the original character portraits from the game. Oh, okay, great. In case you want to show people that. Yeah, and yeah, it is. It, it is totally just Sean Connery. It, yeah, absolutely is. Let me let me show that real quick in like the little window here. Uh, but I thought you said you put it in the chat. Skype chat. Oh, the, oh, the Skype chat. Well, you could have just put it in the regular chat. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be on oh, the video. Oh shit. Let let's add to group call. I got I got Bob here. 
Oh yeah. He I I said, "Hey, be on the stream." And then he got home and he's like, "Hey, I'm ready." And but I was streaming, so I ignored him by accident. There you go. There's some some the, it's, wow, yeah, he's so so Sean Connery. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, there's that right, to the right of him. That's Campbell. To the left is somebody. There, I think that's Master. Mi- I think this one on the left is Master Miller, and then Holly, mm-hmm. and then that last one is Salt Snake, which is just the fucking worst picture. Like for as cool, <laughs> like like he just looks like worried and sad. Like he looks like a bumbling buffoon of a character. I don't know why you would pick that care that picture for. Solid snake, but whatever. He he looks like Sylvester Stallone now. <laughs> Metal Gear Two MSX portraits. Hey Bob. Hey. Oh hi. Hey Bob. Sorry, I forgot that you were. Uh... Oh, you want to know you another forgot ridiculous? That I existed. That's yeah, cool. I know. That's fine. You want to know another ridiculous one for how much uh, Big Boss looks like Sean Connery? Look, look at the the picture for one of the scientists it's just so obviously <laughs> albert einstein it's like insane that is literally just albert einstein <laughs> is that marv is that dr marv yeah uh it's dr petrovic who was mm. uh well i don't know if he was in i i'm not sure if it's supposed to be the exact same character that's in metal gear solid 3 or like that character's father or something who was like the original uh, designer of the Shago Hod and Metal Gear and whatever. The Shadow Hog? The Shago Hod. Ah. It's like the it's the Metal Gear stand in in MGS3 before there was supposed to be a Metal Gear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought there was a Sonic the Hedgehog crossover in Metal Gear. Oh, the, yeah, the. Sh- the Shadow Hog? Shadow Hog, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so Bob, you join our you join our story already in progress. We have obtained a gun and sixty bullets and an ID card, uh, as well as a gas mask, regular binoculars, and infrared binoculars. Have you found a cigarette yet? No. Well, Damn. no. You start with cigarettes. Oh well, then okay. Yeah. That's all I need to know. Yep. The story so far: cigarettes. Perfect. What, Bob? What do you know about Metal Gear? Fucking everything. Ask me a question. Go ahead. I'll uh, answer it. Uh, what? It, what is the name of of NASA's secret oops. uh task force? NASA secret task force. I Wait, have no idea. I don't know. Does it, does it say a name? Did we? Did it, we it, even get a name? Ah, shit. I, I thought it did. It, it called them a. Uh, like they're extraterrestrial combat right. something. Which is just the fucking dumbest thing in the world. Kojima NASA had a... did a dumb thing? No way. <laughs> oh man, that's well, rough. My dear. I mean, I love the idea that NASA had a secret ninja squad for space combat. I do like that idea. That sounds like just dumb Kojima's enough to be ideas. true to me. That sounds just dumb enough to be true. I don't know. While wow, their funding got cut. Kyle, ration. No, it's automatic when you have the rations equipped. Uh. Gotcha. No bullets sound like that. Gotcha. No. No. (laughs) Fuck you. Or in any Metal Gear fight where you stand next to the boss. No. I forgot. Oh, I know. He turned around a bunch of times, and then laid on the floor. <laughs> I, for- I forgot I had two different kinds of rations. Damn. Yeah, to answer your question, I, I I've only played the Metal Gear Solid games. I only mm. recently played MGS One. Oh and really? That was frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I didn't know that there were two endings. I had no idea. Oh, really? yeah. I got the worst ending, and then I posted on Twitter about it, and they were like, you suck, and I'm like, oh. Oh, you got the bad ending, Bob. I'm so disappointed. I know. That's what everyone else said, and it pissed me off, because it's like, oh, game. You Arr. can't, you gave in to the torture? I thought I had to. Come on, Bob. I no, that I was, to. that's what I thought the first time I played that game, too. Have we learned, like, have I, we learned nothing understand. from Galaxy Quest? <laughs> Never give up. I didn't up. understand how the Never meter works. 
And so like it said submit and I thought that I was like building meter in that meter and then you would hit submit to like submit the meter that you had built like for consideration. Uh, wait, it was your life meter. Submit to Ocelot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I failed it once and I hadn't saved in like an hour and a half. So oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I, I took it as like a hint. Hey, you're not supposed to do that. So yeah, I, I get that. I totally get that. I was probably, the first time I, I read, I played that game, I was probably using a walkthrough that just said, don't submit. And I said, yeah, okay, walkthrough. I wanted to play it without a walkthrough of any of any kind, so I played the entire hey, game without it. Like, so th this is where I, uh, I got really impressed with Metal Gear 2. Was when this guy started giving his whole speech, and I was like, oh man, this was, I, apparently Metal Gear 2 was when it became Metal Gear. Kyle Snyder was your buddy in the original game. He was the resistance leader. Or one of the resistance, I don't know. Now they turned me into a space ninja. You've got a lot to learn, Snake. I was almost killed, but not by them. Snake, didn't you know? The N in NASA stands for ninja. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ninja air going space something something. Administration. What are you saying, Snyder? Homer Jack Bonanza, yeah, that, that ending was amazing. I don't care if it's considered the bad ending. Otacon and Snake hopping on a motorcycle is awesome. Yeah, the 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 end of Metal Gear Solid One lays it on. I mean, I don't know what what Snake says for the Otacon ending because I haven't seen it, but the one with Meryl, he lays it on so thick about like the meaning of life and what life is about, and he's gonna go live life. And then there's footage of polar bears. What a fucking triumph <laughs> of a game! I love how ridiculous it is. I I don't remember it being that ridiculous. I just remember like Snake hopping on the motorcycle and then turning to Otacon and being like, hey. Come on, up on the back, <laughs> and Otacon just oh. hops on, and then they ride off into the, okay. the sunset. Okay. You should you should YouTube the uh, the Merrill ending then. I was thinking about replaying it and just getting it anyway. Oh, I've been really? trying to replay all the Metal Gear Solid stuff because in preparation for the new game and uh, PT or uh, Silent Hills. Mm. Oh, because yeah, it's a Kojima game. Connection? Forgot about that. I don't, there probably isn't going to be a connection, most likely. I mean, Kojima is the type of dude to do something like bonkers like that. But no, I just want I'm I just uh, trying to get my mind uh, my my head in his mindset, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he that the Kojima mindset is a weird mindset. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to prep yourself for it. What if uh, what if PT is just the most advanced VR training? I I. There are theories that involve that, so oh, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so this is where uh, the boss is talking about. Uh, or I'm sorry. Yeah, but not not the boss, not the boss, just the, the boss, boss that I just fought. Right. <laughs> So, so Bob, you had already played Metal Gear Solid One, and you're, this was a replaying of it. What? No, I had never played it. But you had played other ones. I'm confused. Yeah. Okay. I played Metal Gear Solid Two first, and that's. Insane. I really liked that game. Two is my favorite one. Three is my favorite. You're crazy. So, I don't know. <laughs> I can see why. where you're coming from, but you're cray. I am not cray. That is a great game, and that's why I'm kind of replaying. I, I got the HD collection. That's why I'm replaying all. Of them. Nice. Uh, one is probably my favorite, followed by, I think, four. There are definitely moments towards the end of two and three that are amazing, but I think overall, one and four are the two best. Do you think that um, Twin Snakes is worth a playthrough? No. Uh, I actually was like just playing it like a week ago. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, now what is this guard? They just... These lasers don't go away, so what? I just have to crawl under them. That's stupid. I yeah, I tried that. It doesn't work. Oh, I guess you just can't go this way. Well, I guess I guess I should say that Metal Gear uh, 
Twin Snakes is worth a playthrough if you uh, genuinely dislike the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 1, but like the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 2, because that's, mm. that's most of what that game is. It's just taking the gameplay from 2 and slapping it onto 1. Uh, but mm. I actually like the gameplay of 1 more than 2, so that doesn't do much for me. And they kind of... They re-recorded the, or re-choreographed the cutscenes in some dumb ways. But. Yeah, I was watching some uh, of the intro stuff on uh, YouTube, and yeah, they somehow made it more awkward and stilted. Yeah, what I what I heard was, well, first of all, they, the choreographer they got for the game was like some, you know, like martial arts movie guy. Oh. But huh. a apparently, from what I heard, it was that Kojima actually requested that they kind of like make the cutscenes more action-y or something, and then apparently they, they did that, and I don't know if he didn't like the way it turned out or what the deal was, but he he refuses to acknowledge the existence of Twin Snakes, whatever <laughs> it is. I, I love the idea that Kojima found something too absurd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just like, this is not what I wanted. Drop kicked a missile? <laughs> no, just can't have that in the Metal Gear Solid series. Nano Machine's fine, okay. Yeah. Have you, uh, have either of you guys? I guess Jordan probably hasn't, but Bob, have you played Peace Walker? I, Oops. that's uh, one of no. the reasons why I'm, uh, I haven't. That's one of the reasons why I'm replaying all the games, actually. Uh, the HD collection, I got it for, uh, specifically because I was told Peace Walker is really, really good. And if I like Metal Gear Solid 3, I definitely need to play Peace Walker. I'm, so, you, well, I would say story-wise, you probably should, definitely, because it seems to be following the story of Peace Walker, but I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it, because... I've mostly heard nothing but good things about Peace Walker, and I fucking hated that game. Really? It, that was the PSP one, right? Yeah. It was one of the PSP games. <laughs> there you go, you got him. Got him. <laughs> what, what were you doing? Are you tapping his shoulder? Like, hey, hey buddy, hey. hey. Hey guy, turn around, turn around, come on. Oops. Uh, but I am, I, I think, so I, I've gotten back into Metal Gear uh, just recently because I've been watching Metal Gear Scanlan, which is Giant Bomb's uh, basically let's play of Metal Gear Solid, or it's Drew Scanlan and uh, Dan Reichert. Dan Reichert is a huge fan of Metal Gear Solid, and Drew Scanlan hadn't played any of them, so they're re-experiencing them together. And I, ooh, there's a thing in here. There's a hidey hole. Oh, but they're never gonna go away. Okay. Nah, you're fine. No, they. I. I've tested it before. They never like go away. I can't see him. Shoot the wall. <laughs> oh shit. Oh man. Oh wait. Key card two. I have now. Aha. There we go. Get a tank. Uh. 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 Yeah, I like the dynamic of two people in LPs where one is like passionate about the game and the other one doesn't yeah. really know what the hell it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that might be cool to check out. Drew Scanlon's a funny guy. Yeah, Dan Dan Reichert is a funny guy. Dan Reichert's a goofy guy. Dan Reichert I, I, is a special human being, yeah. unlike any other. <laughs> I'd say that they're entertaining in very different ways, but they make a good pair. Yeah, they definitely do. So yeah, I, I've I miss been... Vinny though, man. <sighs> So I gotta, I gotta follow this guy in the green beret now. You gotta follow him? Yeah, he's the guard that, uh, that guards uh, Dr. Marv, so I have to follow mm. him through the jungle. It's one of those things where uh, the jungle is like a maze, but the game intentionally does not let you get through it unless you follow the person through the jungle. Uh... Hmm, I wonder which way we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops. <laughs> so I think I think I said this to you, Jordan. I asked you if you had played Metal Gear Solid before, and if you had said no, I would have just like Metal Gear Scanlan to you, like just <laughs> yeah. just strap in, motherfucker, because we're playing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I love that game. the The first time I ever played uh, Metal Gear Solid was you remember those Pizza Hut demo discs? Yes. I I don't remember them, but I learned about them recently on Giant Bomb. 
Yeah, uh, it was like you ordered a personal pan pizza or like any uh -huh. large, and it came with like a PlayStation demo that said it had five demos on it. And one of them had yep. Metal Gear and like Medieval and some other stuff. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. one of them had Gran Turismo 2, I want to say. Or maybe it was even the first Gran Turismo. So that's that's actually where the Metal Gear Scanlan thing on Giant Bomb came from. Oh, was yeah. Dan and Drew made a different segment that frankly demo is, derby. is yeah is genius i wish i had thought of it which is demo derby where they pick a demo disc and then just commit to playing and looking at every piece of content on the demo disc and the i think the first one they did was the pizza hut one with metal gear solid on it mm. and i think dan saw it and was just like oh man this game's awesome we got to play all these games yeah that okay. was the first exposure that i had to any of it and i was i was obsessed with that demo like i played it maybe 30 or 40 times yeah same yeah, I, I played the absolute hell out of that demo but i got it i got it with the uh uh zone of the enders game oh word yeah okay yeah or that, so, no, that, that, would that was the, two the demo for two right yeah yeah two i didn't yeah. play the demo for one i thought we were talking about two shit <laughs> no, you're stupid. I remember idiot. the. Uh, no, that demo disc dem was amazing. It comes with like an FMV of like a living room with a Pizza Hut box on the. Ah, oh, shit! Mm -hmm. I fucked up. God oh. damn it! You had a living room with a Pizza Hut box and a PlayStation on it, and it zooms in on the TV or something. Yeah, I remember CG. that. God, there if was you. One for Crash Bandicoot, wasn't if... there? <laughs> there must have been. If you want to remember what the hell video game promotional media was like in the '90s, you have got to go check out Dem Demo Derby. It is. Ludicrous. They yeah, they go into uh, time. they go into the PlayStation Underground discs, which were like the. It's it's hard to imagine this because media is so freely available now. But you, god damn it, you had yeah. to pay like a monthly fee, and then they would send you like a demo disc every month. It was like it was a, on top of having a. Uh, was it part of having a, an official PlayStation magazine subscription, or was it a separate thing? I don't know because I was not actually involved in PlayStation at the time. Uh, but I'm gonna look it up. I mean, it was really impressive. Like, it was not your typical like menu with just a bunch of like a handful of demos. It was like mm -hmm. the one that they went through was crazy. Like, there was an entire disc that was practically just like promotional videos for stuff and and oh, and there would even be a like cheat save files that you could like you could put in yeah, the disc and put that. in a memory card and then download like a save file for X game that has all the weapons unlocked or has like a special costume. It was so crazy. Okay, yeah, PlayStation Underground was its own thing. The magazine focused on PlayStation franchise, including gaming on the original Sony PlayStation and the PlayStation 2. Unlike its paper-based counterpart, the official U.S. PlayStation magazine, yeah. PlayStation Underground came in the form of CD-ROMs, which could be played on the PlayStation and PlayStation 2 consoles. I think I think at some point they got folded together or something near the end. But yeah. uh, The magazine was eventually merged with the official U.S. PlayStation magazine go. in 2001 when it was discontinued. Yeah. I, I oh, remember the... Are... The last memory I have of a demo disc was when I learned that the official PlayStation magazine that month had the demo for Guitar Hero 2, and I just, like, went and, like, begged my, I think, grandmother for, like, the money to buy the magazine, which, including the demo disc, was, like, an insane price. It was, like, $15 or something. Yeah, they, they, they were expensive because they had the discs in there. Yeah. And that I, was like, why I never got them. Like, we were an EGM household because fucking PlayStation magazine was expensive as hell. Yeah, but I, I I just like ran out the door and like walked whatever it was the like five miles to the store where I could get it, and then played the shit out of the Guitar Hero 2 demo for the next however long. Probably the thing I remember most from the PlayStation uh, Underground stuff was uh, the Mystery Science Theater promo for it. Yeah. yeah, I was just about to bring that up, but you already put the link in in a yeah. Skype chat. Yeah, put it in the Twitch chat. Oh, okay. I should probably get on Twitch. I'll, I'll drop it in there. Okay. Whoop. Oh man, the good old days. I've been recently rewatching all the Mystery Science Theater stuff too. They're so good. So good. Really? Oh They're man. So good. It's so amazing how well that ages. Uh, Bill Corbett is going to be the uh, the special expert guest on My Brother, My Brother and Me next week. Yeah, I saw that. He pro uh, he uh, retweeted something about that. Oh, man. 
gonna be good. We're still, still so funny. Uh... Oh man, we're about to. C I just remembered we're about to come up on the most amazing part of the game. Or at least the game so far, because this is almost as far as I've actually gotten in this game. Cool. It's actually the copy protection for the game. Yeah. You know, if you remember, obviously, back in the day, it, they didn't really have good, like, virtual copy protection, so it would be a thing that involved, like, the manual. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Oops. Aw, oh, shit. No, I think we're fine. Yeah. Where'd he go? So you go in here, and you can see over on the radar, there's some guy in the next room, and he's just, like, pounding on it. The wall. <laughs> there's nothing to do in here, so you just kind of leave after a while. And the colonel calls you up and says, It's a tap code. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And so, um, what do you do now? So Kojima was doing this meta stuff, like, early, early on. The, uh, damn it. The I, the Vita version had like a oh there it is software manual. Yeah. You actually have to go in here. Do 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 do. Oh oh that's just I was like ooh a, a medic what that's just Metal Gear Three, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid <laughs> Three. Yeah, that, that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier, Bob, was I, I just recently played all the way through Metal Gear 1, and that game basically has, like, no story. Like, you could summarize the events and, like, full dialogue of that game in about 10 seconds. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I put this game in, and there's people talking about, like, what the way people communicated in Vietnam, and you can call up a guy and he tells you about why you should always swallow your saliva if you're being hunted by enemy soldiers, and just all this <laughs> crazy stuff. Oh, man. Oh, there's transfaring. Don't forget that. Hey, guys, you can transfer stuff. Transferring is a new way to play games. It? Oh, there's... Oh, oh, Jordan. There's a fucking transferring logo, okay? There sure is. Let me get that is. tattooed on my leg. Don't worry. You can't fucking transfer your Metal Gear 1 and 2 saves. Don't worry about that. Uh... Here we go. Uh... Where is it? Oh, here it is. It's up in the top right here. Tap codes. Oh my god. So, so you have to listen to his tapping, and the first tap he does is uh, for the for which row it is. So you have to count down from the top, and then the next tapping you have to count over from the left. And you have to listen to all his his, his tippity taps. So it's Picross. It, it's exactly like Picross, Jordan. You nailed it. Um, I actually I did this um, earlier today, this morning, and I you know I took out like a piece of paper and drew the the little grid and then counted it out as I was listening. But I'll just kind of kind of skip ahead it. here. Yeah. It's really quick though. It was like I was like having to count in my head. I had to listen to to it like three times in a row before I really got it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's actually it's all numbers. He's tapping out his uh, his frequency, oh, his frequency, which I think uh. was like zero eight. Fuck you. Oh no! <laughs> oh shit. Or is it eight three? What they did add. Bum, 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 bum. What they did add for these ports is the ability to save the uh, frequencies of the people you communicate with, which wasn't in the original. Which, like, mm. thank God for that, because yeah. that would be rough. I, you want me to look I, this up? I, oh. Oh, there you go. No, that's no, that's Campbell. That's not. Oh. I didn't want you. I didn't want you. Go away. <laughs> Campbell's like, oh. Okay, okay. Shit. Come on. Okay, maybe it was something eight then. Let's, how about Google, six Google. eight? Yeah, we're going with yeah, six I'm eight not. here. God damn it! 
Do you know this guy's name? It's, yeah, I think it's boom, 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 it's, boom, uh, boom. <laughs> it's Dr. Marv. Oh, Marv, it's uh, 140.51. F- 51? What? That's that's what ussupport.konami.com slash Well, that's not true. Portal. I guess we're just going to have to fucking do this. Let's just do it. Codec frequencies for Metal Gear 2 is an article on the US support site for Konami. I know it's 140, but... Dot five one, right? That's four. That's the zero. Six. Six. Two? Or was it uh, six? Seven or eight? Try six 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 dot six six. What the fuck? Sixty nine. What the hell? <laughs> Four twenty dot sixty nine. Uh, all right, let me look this up. Metal Metal Gear Tap Code Grid. That's the problem is I just don't have it in front of me because it's a software manual, so you can't look at it while you. Okay, here we go. One, two. Or is it five, seven? Okay, here we go. Starting over. That's the one. That's the four. That's the zero. I'm gonna put it over here. That's eight. Two. Eight two. It's eight two, guys. Just play the fucking game and you get it. Oh, it's it's Albert Einstein. Hello, Dr. Einstein. Oh, it's not Dr. Marv, it's Dr. Madnar. Oh, no wonder. Oh, okay. <laughs> you gave me the, I gave you the wrong name. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Well, that's, that's good, Jordan. I didn't want you to give me that. You, you made right. me do what I should have done, which is actually do the thing. Play the video game. Dr. Dra- Drago Petrovic Madnar. How did you get such a long name? <laughs> Why did they let him have a codec? Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, it's uh, it's hidden inside of his ear. It only vibrates the small bones of his ear, so only oh, he can right. hear oh. it. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes, Metal Gear. Snake is here in Zanzibar land. Every time I read the word Zanzibar, I roll my goddamn eyes. <laughs> the one you destroyed three years ago was only a prototype. Uh, a prototype of Zanzibar Island? No, it's it's one thing to call it Zanzibar. That's fine. When they call it Zanzibar Land, that's just, like, that's rough. Yeah, it sounds like... <laughs> Zanzibar uh, Land! It sounds like the new version of Jurassic Park. <sighs> we no, genetically games... reconstituted Oops. these Zanzibars, and now they roam free on this island. Hey, you guys want to go to the Zanzibar later? Get some good. They have some good drinks at the Zanzibar. No, it's Bar Zanza. Yeah, oh. yeah, Bar Zanza, right? Bar Z, Dragon mm. Bar Z. Big <laughs> Boss. Big Boss. Oilix. Oh, I remember Oilix. What is Oilix? Oh, it's some stupid thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. Oilix. It was like some thing that they had that like separated oil from like they made like gas with it or something. Uh, Oilix, uh, from what I have gathered from the intro scene of this game, is a microbe developed by Dr. Marv that uh, can fabricate oil slash right. whatever gas or cool. something. So they they've captured him. He was he was on his way to share the information with the world, of course, but he was captured by Outer Heaven. 
or captured by Zanzibar land, which we have not yet learned is the second outer heaven. Uh, someone should edit clips of uh, Metal Gear and Metal Gear Solid to have the dun 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 sound every time. <laughs> or just something the like this happens. Dramatic prairie dog music. I like that he says, uh, science is not meant only for killing. Like, science can be for killing sometimes, but everything <laughs> in moderation, guys. I, I, I understand that science's original intention was for killing, but we've discovered that we can use it for other things. <laughs> Hold on, I've got to finish up, finish up my A-bomb. Uh, but, unfortunately, the wall separating us is made of Chobam armor plate. You can't blast your way through it. Just leave me here and go rescue my... Okay. Snake. Snake. All right. So uh, this game has... Uh, I mean, the, as you've probably picked up, the dialogue in this game is pretty important at times. Uh, and I think we're all familiar with the way things work in games, which is when the text is printing out, you push a button, and then it puts the rest of the text on screen without the... Yeah pomp and circumstance of the typing it out mm -hmm. uh, but instead in this game when you push a button while text is printing out it just skips to the next the next oh. thing and oh, good. it is the worst I've actually had like a game script up in a window for every time I accidentally it also it's not just with the X button it's with like the d-pad too if you push the d-pad it skips to the next message and I've had to like go back and look at the great the game script to see what I missed so that's cool so whenever there's like one of these scenes, you gotta sort of take the controller and daintily like put it away from you so you don't accidentally hit something. Basically, yeah. Yeah. And and every once in a while, I just forget. Like this, the text is printing out, and I'm like, okay, X button. I want to read all of this now, and then it just goes yeah. away, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> I'm actually playing a game right now for an uh, upcoming LP, and it does something like that, except uh, it lets you, it just lets you skip the um, annoying sound that the oh, words sorry. make when they fill in. Look at this I just discovered. You can climb under the porch. Ooh. That's great. <laughs> you found where they keep all their trash. <laughs> Why can't I go to the left? <laughs> He's like poking out there like a fucking prairie dog. Get out of here. Where'd Snake go? Oh, there he is. It's me. Attention to detail, guys. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the thing with these games. I kind of want to play Metal Gear 3 now. Let's let's uh, let's bomb out of this for a second. Hop into Metal Ooh. Gear 3. Metal Gear Solid 3, in fact. What if what if after Metal Gear uh, what if after Phantom Pain uh, Kojima just made Metal Gear 3? Oh God, that'd be great. I really I. I keep every single time there's a new Metal Gear game that features Big Boss. I keep hoping that it's finally the game that like retells the events of Metal Gear One and Two from Big Boss's side, but I just mm -hmm. feel like it's never gonna happen. He's just gonna keep adding more story in between Metal Gear One and whatever game he's currently at. Well, a lot of the stuff that like the games have been covering it has been established canon that they're just like fleshing out now yeah let's uh let's uh, talk to master miller what does he have to say i bet he i bet he's got a helpful hint oh we already heard this one miller come on fuck you come on <laughs> Whatever happens, don't give up. I gotta go. Yes, here we go. When replenishing your fluids, you shouldn't drink any more than 100 uh, cc's at a time. Which, I'm pretty sure, cc's and milliliters, from what I understand, are exactly the same. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the Vita version it says milliliters and not cc's, but maybe I just... That's weird. Yeah, when 100 it... cubic centimeters is 100 millimeters. When it absorbs fluids, your body burns an amount of energy equal to the temperature difference between your body and the fluid. That's because it has to raise the fluid's temperature to match your body temperature. It also makes your blood thinner, slowing your brain functions. So don't drink too much soda while you're playing. Over and out. Thanks, so master. 100, 100 milli milliliters is 3.38 ounces. Which is basically nothing. Huh. Huh. 
Don't drink too much, oh. Dumbo. Yeah. Yeah, there, there was that one fourth wall breaking moment in the first one, and apparently it was a big hit because they're everywhere in Metal Gear 2. <laughs> like, they yeah. just... Con like, when you uh, call up Colonel Campbell one time, he says, like, you, you have to put your... Uh, put your mind in the position of the enemy and game designer. Try to think of what they would have thought of. <laughs> Trying to get people to think of what Kojima is yeah, yeah. thinking. <laughs> Try to put your mind uh, in, in Kojima's head for a second. Okay. Like, um, nano machines, nano machines, nano machines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nano machines, military industrial complex, uh, nuclear crisis boobs. Did I get it? Ninja space. Um, there you go. Ninjas. Wikipedia. Wikipedia references. In the next Metal Gear game, they're gonna have a, a codec call that you can just use for a uh, Wikipedia. You just call up Wikipedia and it reads a random article. <laughs> like like uh, Red Pandas, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Dude, I fucking love. In uh, in Metal Gear Solid 4, you just have an iPod. Yeah. yeah. You have an iPod and you have to control it by moving the analog stick around like you're controlling the scroll wheel. Such a dumb thing. Anyway, I'm gonna go. And then, uh, what is what is the what is the latest one? The demo for the latest one? What is that called? Uh, Ground Zeroes. Yeah. Ground now Zeroes. Oh, you mean droid? you mean the prologue campaign experience? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to call that. The 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 small game that is totally absolutely worth forty dollars. <sighs> yeah, I'll be, that. Yeah, I'll be forty dollars. Right I forgot that that's what they were charging for yeah. that. For the I next didn't get it for version. that. I got it for like twenty. So I rented it from Redbox, but I accidentally kept it for like four days, so I ended up paying like eight or ten dollars or something. Mm. Okay, I'm leaving. You're leaving. He left. That jerk. How's but it yeah, going, Bob? It's going good. How are you doing, Jordan? Doing all right. Yeah, I was uh, I was gonna say that they call it the iDroid now, which is just like, oh, Android plus iPhone equals iDroid. Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> there, doesn't he also make cases for it for the iPhone, and it makes it look exactly like an iDroid? Yeah, he does. You can just uh, I I don't know where they sell them, but uh. I think they sell them at Uniqlo stores mm -hmm. in Japan. Maybe I know that I know that Konami does a bunch of stuff with Uniqlo. Uh, but yeah, there are iDroid cases that you can just buy. Cool. That make your iPhone like five times bigger. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I, I didn't play Ground Zeroes because um, I, I don't have any next gen consoles yet. It's weird. I actually do like the um, playing Ground Zeroes actually got me to buy Metal Gear Solid 1 and the uh, HD collection because oh, yeah? there's a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, the story is bonkers, just like more so than usual. And I was actually playing it with the girlfriend. She kind of got disgusted at one point and just like mm -hmm. had, to, had to piece out of that. But um but other than that, it was I, the gameplay is solid. I had fun. Yeah, that's what I've heard is that like this is the best playing Metal Gear in a while. Yeah, I mean they utilize the, uh, the Dual Shock. What is it four now? I think it's four. The new Dual Shock controller and the, the touchpad pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I like uh, being able to like you know tap it in order to get the iDroid to come up and all that stuff. Plus the new uh, the DualShock 4 just feels great to play games yeah. with. I it's love it. It's a really good controller. Yeah. I actually um, I downloaded a mod so I can play uh, games on the PC with it. And, uh, oh, right. It's that uh, that wrapper? Yeah. The uh, yeah. DS4 tool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah I'm, I played a little bit of Splunky. Actually, someone gifted me this game called Marlo Briggs, and I was playing that with it. It was a goofy Marlo God of War-esque game. Yeah, it's it's. I had no idea what it was, but it's basically God of War with it. And uh, oh, I remember this game, Marlo Briggs and the Mask of Death. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty ridiculous, and that's why I like it. I like stupid games. It's got a nine out of ten on Steam. Does it? What are you guys yeah. talking about? Wow, Marlo that's... Briggs and the Mask of Death. What is that? 
it's a goofy, goofy game. It's basically God of War, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it other than it's basically God of War. You, you guys cover. You guys keep talking. I'm gonna switch my video from the Frame Meister to the actual thing, like I like I should have. Okay, what should we talk about? Oh, Marlowe Briggs and the Mask of Death is one of uh, Total Biscuits re- recommended games as oh, a Steam curator. Good, good. Oh boy, great. Uh, deleting it now. Mark of quality. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> he's guy. he's basically like the Ro- the Roger Ebert of video games. So. Oh, right, I, I, yeah. I mean, I don't understand why anyone would listen to anybody else. <laughs> I mean, one of his shows is an acronym for what the fuck, so <laughs> get with the program, and that program mm-hmm. is videogames.exe. <laughs> All I know oh, is goodness. I want to finish Hydrophobia Prophecy. No. I never played any of those games. It's just one game, but several versions of it. <laughs> it's just one game, but they fucked up hard enough to be like, uh, we should probably fix this. Mm. We did a really bad job. We, we donked it. Here's another one. We donked hardcore, bro. Here's hydrophobia.exe version 2. But yeah, I've been messing around with that one. That seems like a good game with a nice big old history to maybe possibly do an LP of in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about with that game. Yeah, that one and um I was also thinking about doing one for um what is it called? Oh man. Oh, it's this really weird dumb game that's a mod of uh Unreal. I think it was Unreal Tournament. Hmm. And it was it was like a contest that these guys did and it turned it and uh they oh, I should probably find the name of the stupid game instead of rambling about it what is the name of it cry of fear no oh i have it on my wish list hold on how do i get to my wish list (laughs) (laughs) uh go to go to your list of games or i think library and then no it's not in there no like go to go to your profile and then Oh, like go to the public list of your games, and I think it's in there somewhere. It's weird. For some reason, finding your own wish list is totally different from finding anybody else's. Oh, there it is. And it's not on there. Great. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, oh, man, what was it called? Oh, it was really stupid. It was so stupid. So perfectly stupid. Mod of... Nah, whatever. Wait, Forget Techno Syndrome it. in chat says, I can't wait for Ground Zeroes to come out on Steam in a couple of weeks. Is that happening? Uh, no yes. Really? Yeah, why? Why are we surprised? I didn't know. It's 2014, bro. Get with the times. Huh. I totally forgot about that. Maybe I'll play it. Uh, You could skip it. I mean, maybe I'll wait for a Steam sale and then play it. You could skip it. <laughs> That's I. I should probably give Ground Zeroes another shot, but I I, I played it, uh, just the the little the actual story campaign part. I played it once and I uh, did did not did not enjoy, was not pleased. Mm. I I thought it was way too hard. Like it felt like there was no like route that would get me in without like avoiding guards. Like it like it just felt like at certain parts there were just guards everywhere, and it was no oh, man. Found it. Damnation. Damnation? Yeah. That one's got a really interesting backstory and development Mm. history. (laughs) Basically, it was a mod of Unreal Tournament, I think, and then it won some awards, and so they turned it into a fully-fledged game, and it it just bombed. Bombed (laughs) harder than you could possibly imagine. Damnation. Yeah. Yeah. I got the music in my head. Uh, 
It's uh, it's on my screen, so it should be on XSplit's screen, but it's not. That's concerning to me. Well, I hmm. mean, are you playing Blue Screen of Death, the game? No, I'm not. Oh, oh, well, we have a problem. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, are you playing Black Screen of Death? Oh, what the hell? Are you playing unloaded PlayStation 4 menu screen? Uh-oh. Oh, man. XSplit is upset about the lack of a frame meister. It is really upset. Wait, maybe this is part of the game. This is Metal Gear Solid after yeah. all. Oh, mm -hmm. shit. It does say hideo in the corner of my screen, so I do know that I think I need to change the input. You know, that's the one terrifying thing about um, Kojima doing a Silent Hill game. He's our, he made PT is basically like a meta, uh, a lot of meta references to like playing with a bunch of people and streaming and stuff. And that's one of the, way the ways that you solve the game. So I'm, I'm kind of terrified of him actually trying to do shit like this. Wait, he, <laughs> he made a references to streaming the game? Yeah, he said uh, one of the ways that you solve the game is by uh, playing together. Like he kept making oh, references about it. Okay. And it was basically just an elaborate way of saying, hey, uh, you know, you should use the microphone in order to play this game, and that's how right. you beat one of the the, the main right. puzzle at the end. Oh, okay, Cause, yeah, because the microphone you're streaming—that's it's yeah. interesting. You know, for some of some of Kojima's ideas are stupid, but yeah. I you gotta hand it to him for really attempting to think outside the box, because not mm -hmm. a lot of people do do it as hard as as Kojima does it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it, it backfires, but I'm still glad that he does that stuff. Yeah. Because if he wasn't doing it, then I don't think anyone would be, really. Right. Uh, unfortunately, I think I have to, to restart XSplit, so I'm going to take the stream down for two <coughs> seconds. Okay, goodbye, stream. It's don't go time. nowheres. Train says goodbye. I feel alive. Here. Linked it in Skype. See ya, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, two. You're saying just three. random numbers? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're good on three. You look a little washed out. It's a component. It's a, you know, because I'm, I'm recording from my PS3, the game that is, uh, I'm sorry, the system that is still HDCP locked. Ah. <sighs> uh, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty strapped for cash at the moment. Or, I mean, not at this moment, but just at all moments. Right. So I, I can't... Perpetually strapped. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't bring myself to pull the trigger on it, but I should really just get, like, the $20 HDMI splitter that's on Amazon that just strips out HDCP. Yeah, dude, I, that's what I'm using. Works perfectly fine. It was actually a gift from, uh, I don't know if you know him, but uh, Marshall, uh, G-Hop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was like, "Dude, I got a new, <laughs> a new setup. Do you want my old one?" And I'm like, "Uh, sure." <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me all of his stuff, including his splitter, which is perfectly. It works perfectly fine. Uh, should get a PlayStation Four. That, that should. Uh, it's in the settings, man. <laughs> you just turn that shit. I off. know. Yeah. Well, not at first. They not had at to, first. They had to patch it in. It didn't have an oh, off really? switch at first. Yeah. Oh. So huh. crazy. Like. And, and their explanation was like, but you can just stream from it. I'm like, fuck you, Sony. Like, come on. <laughs> I, I think it was one of those things where it was so rushed. And they just, it was exact same way games are rushed now. They were just like, yeah. everyone's going to be mad, but we can just add an HDCP switch later. Like, we have to work on party invites working or, you know, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, dude, those consoles looked, I mean, I got a PlayStation 4 when that, um, after the initial, like, rush. And it it's so, so felt so rushed that menu all the options it's just they'd all of the including hdcp like all of these options that are perfectly fine on playstation 3 did not work at all and it was just like i found myself using my playstation 3 for like basically everything that uh, except playing playstation 4 games like um oh what was it media center wasn't working in on some, the playstation 4 you're talking about yeah yeah i use uh what was it called uh, it was the server, the way that your um, console acts as a server. PlayStation 3 allows you to sort of yeah, take media and then yep. uh, 
but PlayStation 4 didn't allow for that at right. that time. It might now, but I, I don't know. I've almost never messed with any of that. Yeah, I don't have to anymore because I just got a I got a um, HDMI cable that I can run out from the back of my new graphics card into my TV, and then I could just watch stuff there, like YouTube videos and whatnot. But uh, before then, I was watching st- your streams. Actually, I was exercising while I was uh, was on the exercise bike while I was watching uh, your Silent Hill streams. Oh, with, that's uh, right. Yeah, you told uh, me about that. PlayStation 3 Media Center or whatever it's called. I think that's Xbox's term for Yeah, it. Xbox Media Center and there was uh... Oh my god, the game sound in my headphones is so delayed from what's coming out of my monitor. Uh, I hate that. Like the whole... <laughs> Anyways. I'm back. Hey, welcome, welcome back. back. So what I miss? Um, nothing. Cool. You you missed. Hey, how fucked up is it that uh, they never patched in the ability to turn off HDCP in the PS3? And then hey, how fucked up was it that the PS4 launched without that ability and they had to patch it in later? It's pretty fucked up. Mm. You you also guys both missed that right now there is a 120 gig SSD on Newegg for sixty dollars. Wow, really? 60. Is it one of those ones where you get it and then you crack it open and it's actually like a 16 megabyte USB <laughs> drive that someone's made look like a huge drive? And the the next step up, the 240 is only like 105 or something. It's crazy. Appar- <laughs> apparently, it's so expensive. Apparently, Keith, uh, Keith bought us one, so we're going to be recording to an SSD from now on, which I am very happy about. Uh, I talked to my IT guy at work, and he's kind of iffy about the whole recording to SSDs. Why is that? Because uh, apparently because they run um, faster. Okay. They last less long. <laughs> oh, they just so, less space. No, they, they actually don't have uh, as... Uh, they aren't alive as long as uh, other more traditional hard drives. Which really? I kind of I don't know if I believe that, but that hey, that, I, he's an IT guy. I mean, that's uh, I that's supposed to be the whole thing of SSDs is that they have no moving parts, so they're more reliable. I know, right? That's what I thought, but then he was basically saying that like, no, it doesn't work like that. It's different, and that's... SSDs are better used for like running your programs off of and having it as your main drive on your computer. I don't know, you guys. My uncle works for Nintendo, and he said (laughs) that SSDs are uh, totally worthless and that nobody should ever use them. He was fucked up about that phrase. My dad actually made a fucking game. He made a game for the fucking Super Nintendo. So when I was growing up, I was like, well, it's like the game my dad made. And then kids would fucking make fun of me for it. (laughs) Oh, yeah, sure. Your dad made a game. Yeah, right. Sure. That's it was a piano teaching uh, software, and so I brought it in one day, and they were like, you just took a regular Nintendo game and slapped a sticker on it. And I'm like, no, it was real. So, anyway. <laughs> oh, man, that's rough. Your dad made Mario Paint? That's amazing. <laughs> no, if you, uh, he actually made a game called Miracle. It's, huh. uh, yeah, it teaches you pl- to play the piano. It's pretty cool. Um, all right, but, so like, I don't see how recording to an SSD and reading information off of an SSD yeah, it's... is any different. Well, I think he's saying it's it's not any different, but that because there is less life in an SSD, you shouldn't put sensitive information on it because you can. Well, you shouldn't it. use it to store information or keep uh, information that you want to use as a um, like a backup. Right. Like, don't use a solid state drive if you're going to use the drive specifically for archiving your footage or your LP footage. Or oh anything like well. That. We weren't going to do that anyways because that's an insane use of a Like, we would need way more space for archiving. Like, we already have, like, hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes of archives. But uh, Do you, you, you keep, do you keep all your, uh, your old stuff? Do not you archive all that? Not the originals, but we have almost every MP4 video that we've ever made. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, too. Yeah. It's hard because I'm recording, uh, what, with YouTube being 60 FPS now? Yeah. I'm recording super, super delicious video yeah it is so big it's so big you know what you do um i don't know how easy this is to just implement but i know it's something that the black magic software comes with 
it uh-huh. has a codec called uh, Motion JPEG, which yep. uh, people shit on because it kind of sounds dumb when you say it, but it's actually really useful for stuff like Let's Plays where you're not actually you don't need like movie quality footage mm-hmm. because you're just gonna turn it into an MP4 anyways and then put it on YouTube. It's it's just like an AVI file where there's like no keyframes or whatever the fuck. It's just like a bunch of frames for like the entire video. But instead of it being an uncompressed file, each frame is a JPEG. So it actually looks really close to uncompressed video. And you still have the flexibility of it being an AVI file. But it's much smaller. Yeah, I got uh, Bandicam and I'm recording my new LP footage with that. And uh, that was that's actually their recommended setting for recording to uh, Premiere is uh, Motion JPEG. But I, I had a lot of issues with it. it the, the sync with uh, recording at 60 FPS with audio gets all fucked up, so I, I can't use it. Uh, so now I'm just recording, uh, I think I'm recording MP4s uh, uncompressed. One, uh, what was it, iframe every single frame. So all I know is it looks beautiful, plays perfectly. Can't wait to upload that stuff. Oh, man. Oh, shit. I just, while we're talking about hard drives, I bought uh, Nicole a hard drive from Newegg for Christmas, and my mom just texted me and told me that it got delivered to her house. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell her to hide it. Uh... Yeah, I ordered all of my uh, Christmas shopping stuff and had it sent to my work, and now I'm kind of rethinking that and being like, oh, shit. I don't know if I'm coming in, <laughs> like, in a week or two. I don't know if uh, I'm okay. going to be able to get all that shit. Um, Zaffo in the chat says, Flash and memory have a limited number of write cycles, but almost infinite read cycles. Interesting. Uh, oh, Burning Hunter mm-hmm. says, SSDs die faster than HDDs because flash memory has a shorter read-write lifespan. Okay. Oh, okay. That's... I so that I was the whole was fucking right. thing. I thought that was the... Uh, ah. Yeah. I, I guess <laughs> the idea is like an SSD will never, almost never have a mechanical issue. All right, I guess right. I guess there's nothing mechanical about it, so it wouldn't, but right. it, it doesn't like, you know. But I feel like whatever the lifespan of an SSD is, it must be like way longer than your typical life of a hard disk drive because usually what happens with those is that the pieces stop working right stop moving i don't know it says on that's average sad. you can rewrite a flash cell about five thousand times that's like a fucking lot of times right hmm. anyways i'm excited about it and uh let's uh stop talking about this and do a thing Am I supposed to be seeing video? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. I have to reshare with you guys because I closed the window. Hey, you jerk. I mean, I mean, unless the chat just wants us to stay on the main menu screen and keep talking about video for another hour. <laughs> so I'm sure they find that fascinating. Yeah, I don't get tired of talking about that at work. Let's let's keep talking about it. <laughs> I'm going to, whenever I am employed again, I'm going to make the dive into Premiere and start learning that because I think I've, I've hit the apex of what I can do creatively with After iMovie. the end of World War II, the <laughs> with world what? was split into two. With iMovie, iMovie man. East and oh, West. Yeah. This marked iMovie. the beginning of the era. Yeah, if, uh, if you or anyone else on the chat is uh, interested in like talking about Premiere and stuff, I am more than happy to help teach I, people. I keep meaning to get into it, but it's just like I have so much experience with... Uh, Oh, so loud. Ah. I have so much experience with, uh, what's it called? AVI synth? Yeah, with AVI synth that oh, God. I just, I can't, I can't get off of it. Because at this point, it's so much quicker for me to edit something in that than to learn a whole new thing. Yeah, but no offense, man. You're, you're having a lot of technical difficulties. Like, and I was watching the Sonic uh, Boom Rise of Lyric thing, or Sonic whatever. I don't know what they're fucking called. But uh, dude, there are some uh, some technical issues going on in there, like the audio level. Like you can easily do that in Premiere. Just like grab all your audio and automatically have it like uh, level out everything with just a single click. Mm, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, I... Uh, at the beginning of your latest episode, the audio is pretty low. And then like halfway through, it bumps all the way up. Oh, mm-hmm. that that was because they were recorded in in different ways. One was the first, the beginning part was me and Keith in the same room doing what we normally do, 
and then uh, the other part was me recording by myself and then Keith and Jordan were on Skype so it kind of changed uh, okay. and there, there's also that bit in the middle where uh, Kyle had forgotten to record locally oh, and so we had to use the uh, stream archive and the thing was I forgot that there was just like a what was even worse about it was that there was a red line flashing vertically on one this side of the screen for that bit. <laughs> and also there was just a timer that was frozen at zero, 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 zero up at the top that just sat yeah. there. Ten minutes to drop off. And that was lame. Hey, you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. <sighs> well, you, at least you powered through it. But yeah, if you need help doing that sort of stuff, I'm always up. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, what is it? Is it a uh, L? No. I think there's a button I can push where I just see it in first person, like at any moment. But oh. Maybe not. This is the HD collection. Or is it triangle? Oh, oh triangle zoom in. Ah. Sunrise. Jack, I've got Oops. Aww. Oh. What? That was lame. What happened? Anyways, we're skydiving. One of his patented inconvenient flashback moments. <laughs> I I tried pushing the X button because none of the other buttons did it, and uh, instead, it uh, just skipped the cutscene. So. Oh, good. Whoops. And the, I also just pushed the start button. <laughs> and that skipped the oh, cutscene. I thought you did it on purpose that time. Well. I'm sure nobody was particularly attached to seeing all that stuff. Or maybe they were, I don't know. Maybe someone's really in love with the skydiving scene in MGS3. I'm not here to judge. It, it, this is Naked Snake inventing the high altitude, low opening technique right here. This is historic. I don't think that's true. Man, let me tell you something about stable harnesses. <laughs> what? Do you know all about this? I do because I have a full Naked Snake uh, cosplay outfit. Oh god! That I that I constructed myself, and uh, the harness that he's got is is a stable harness, and all all capital letters. It's an acronym of some sort. Of course it is. Um, and they were uh, a special harness made for special forces uh, during Vietnam in that era. And boom! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Look they at that were, snake. Sorry. They were produced in extremely limited quantities, okay. and they hardly made any of them. And so to get an actual stable harness now, you're looking at like thirteen or $1,400. Yeah. They are incredibly expensive. But a regular parachute harness from the same era has the same length of web netting and the same Dude, hardware. It's just sewn in a different turn. configuration. And you can get those on eBay for like 30 bucks. Oh, the people in the uh, chat are reminding me. It shows a giant R1 prompt in the corner, you dummy. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was buying a, a parachute harness off eBay and then cutting it apart and then duct taping it back together into a stable harness. I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I if you want to see me in that outfit, go look at uh, the Happy Birthday Keith choice. video on runbutton.net. Oh, yes, of course. Mm. Let's see. I'll be Boy, that's so great. Yeah, everyone go Google the Happy Only Birthday Keith job. video. It's a good video. A was, Jordan, you killed it. You, you submitted, I asked you for one video, you submitted two, and they were the two best videos. <laughs> so well done. Well, thank you. Kind of oh, you mean my video where I went onto the top of my parking garage near my work building and pointed, it, pointed the camera at a tree? Wasn't good enough? Oh, that's right. You know what? And uh, Jack, Jack DeKeet also uh, really killed it there mm -hmm. with, with his British wedding tablecloth or whatever. <laughs> oh, man, that was so good. I We had him on a stream or a podcast recently, and I didn't get to ask him why the hell he has that. They're British. <laughs> I guess, they're, yeah, they're just, they're just issued. Yeah. You get those whenever you pay right, your television license. So, um... Jordan, when you played Metal Gear Solid 3, which version were you playing? You had the behind-the-back camera, right? Yeah. Okay. Cause, you yeah, know, it, it, was, it was this version. This wasn't until the special edition version. The original version, you only had this top-down, like the traditional top-down camera. Oh, word. Which, uh, it worked fine for the other games, 
but it just I think was probably pretty obvious that the the different environment for this game really called for like a a free free looking camera because mm -hmm. instead you just had this. I keep I, every time I start a playthrough of this game, I'm like I should like commit to playing only with the original camera just to get the experience, and I stop doing it after like two seconds because I hate it. <laughs> oh God, no, no! Oh! Snake is dead. I did that at the beginning of Ground on? Zeroes. I, like I, after that huge cutscene, I went over and I accidentally fell off the side of the world. That's great. It was like, oh. But yeah, I played the original version like this, so. Oh really? I mean, yeah, man. Well, this this was a that. must. Love it. You needed this. Yeah, I'm I'm psyched to play uh, the HD collection version of it. I'm working my way through the beginning of uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 right now, uh. so. I, I stupidly, uh, I, oh, there's a snake. There's a snake there. I can eat that snake. If well, I yeah, he's, he's always there. Oh, you're talking about an animal. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Let's get him. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Ha, 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 ha. Look, look at this guy's knife moves. <laughs> For a snake. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Take that, you fiend. I'm yeah, you. get that snake. Our snake H. Uh, how do I climb? Triangle? Uh, tri Try hitting X. It was triangle, Jordan. Hit, hit the action button. Yeah, it's the action button. Come on. Whee! What the fuck? God damn it. My shins! <laughs> <laughs> These, this is the special edition, so it probably has all the ridiculous camo downloaded. Because there, there was extra camo that you could download. Oh, I don't have access to the camo yet. But, uh, you haven't been tutorialized about camo. There was uh, there was camo that you could download. God damn it! <laughs> you could download onto your memory card from like the Konami servers for a while, and it was like ridiculous stuff. Like uh, you could paint Snake's face like different flags for different countries and stuff. Oh, yeah. do you have some some hints for me? Get off that branch, the idiot! On the branch <laughs> pointing east on that tree, right? Walk along the branch and get it. Be careful not to fall. You should be able to grab your backpack if you hang from the branch by pressing... The oh, button. thanks. Thanks, Major Zero. Or, I'm uh, sorry, Major Tom. I don't know what it is about Metal Gear Solid 3, but, like, the ridiculousness feels right. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it doesn't feel right in Metal Gear Solid 2, but in 3, it's just like... Okay, it, it, it like has a bigger meaning. I can't tell you why, but I just I kind of feel the opposite. Huh. It's just, but that's that's what I love about the Metal Gear Solid series is like each each game ha is there's so many things that are consistent across all of them, but they just all have their own weird flavors that appeal to different people in different ways. Survival is fundamental to this. Got it. Like, oh god, look at all this! Like you, this was so so rough about this game is it, it took so long to get in let into like they they had that problem a little bit in Metal Gear Solid One and they definitely took steps to remedy that in Two where like you you get going on the tanker pretty quickly and they mm -hmm. just went full on for Metal Gear Solid Three like you're just listening to people talk on the radio forever at the beginning of this game. Not to mention this whole mission is like a prologue. Yeah. Well, well, and the first hour of Metal Gear Solid 4 is like 80% cutscene, right? Yeah. That's one of the things I never got. Uh, one of the criticisms I never understood about Metal Gear Solid 4. People were saying that it's like, oh, it's a movie. It's like, have you played any <laughs> yeah. Metal Gear Solid games? Like, Oops. What else were you expecting? Exactly. Snake, 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 snake. Uh, or... Uh, uh... I guess I just have to go full knife. Snake, snake, snake. Snake, snake, snake dot com. <laughs> oh, man. Or snake G. I'm an expert in the, uh, the Though, art of close range combat. And then he just flails the knife around. <laughs> there, There's one thing that you can't, you can't deny, though, is that there are actually 
way more cutscenes in four than any other Metal Gear. Like after you beat, after you finish the last gameplay bit in Metal Gear Solid Four, there's like another ninety or a hundred minutes of cutscene. Like there's just a whole movie after the game ends. Yeah, but consider for a moment the ending of that game. And oh no! Everything is worth it. I fucking <laughs> love everything about like, or, or I shouldn't say everything, but I I love most things about Metal Gear Solid Four. So. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm sad I didn't play Metal Gear Solid 1. You get the like, I played Metal Gear Solid... Oh, look at that. <laughs> or I played um, Metal Gear Solid 4 without like getting any of the references to uh, yeah. Metal Gear 1. How could you... I, I don't even know how you could play play and enjoy 2 like without... like I would play Metal Gear Solid 2 for two seconds and go, I, I, can't, I, I gotta know what the fuck they're talking about. I don't know what's going on. Look at these fucking cro man. You know what? There's a lot of awesome shit about Metal Gear Solid Three. Look at these crocodiles just hanging out, just chilling. This game's pretty good, guys. I don't know. Make sure you get real close to it. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get leeches in this game? Look at the camo meter. I'm 90% camouflaged. All that first-person <laughs> camera, man. You know, there's think, a lot of stuff that's good about this game. Let's not, let's not pretend like that's not the case. Oh, uh, trophies too. Yeah, you got fucking trophies. Oh shit, let's get some of this. But how do I get, get that trophies, fruit up just there? Like, just oh, like I Kojima can... originally envisioned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you do get leeches in this game. Leeches? I'm not sure if uh, if you get them in the mud though. I don't hmm. think. You... Mud. But yeah, I remember <laughs> playing this game and then getting a leech. I think. I think it was this game. I think people. Like, I had no idea. So I, <laughs> I think people in the chat are just saying things that happen in Metal Gear Solid 4. Man, god damn it. But uh, I, I stupidly did the thing of I. Uh, I played Metal Gear Solid 1, like the PC version of the. It's a port of the PS1 game. I played it for a couple hours, decided that it was amazing, and then went and got Twin Snakes so I could play, like, the good updated version of it. Uh, uh, so that was how I originally experienced the game, which was kind of a kind of a mistake, I think, in, mm. in retrospect. Especially because it meant that there were a lot of things I didn't like about 2. Because at least when you go to 2, you get, like, the, like, all the gameplay changes, but that since Twin Snake just plays like two already, I didn't like experience any of that change. Hmm. Mm. Who's that? Oh, shit. What the? Get the fu- uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Here we go. You can't see me. You can't see me, buddy. Where am I? I don't know. Uh, you can't see me. You've oh, got shit. a 10% chance of seeing me. Okay, all right, let's. Shit. Oh, there's more guys now. Okay. Uh, stand up. Uh, you're good. You're good. Stand up. Shoot up Abort. Abort. Get in that tree again. <laughs> Abort virtuous mission. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's the thing about metal uh, about like pretty much any Metal Gear game is it all feels totally awesome and cool until you're caught by the enemies and you're like, I hate yeah. this. I hate this. This is the worst. Dude. I had that problem. I, I was posting on Twitter when I was playing um, uh, Ground Zeroes for the first time, and I like I hadn't played a Metal Gear Solid game in forever. Yeah. And so I went to Ground Zeroes and I was playing, and I was doing. I was trying to see, make sure no one saw me. Yeah. It's and like then impossible. when someone saw me, it was just like, oh, it sucked. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I'd restart everything. But uh, every single time I, I got caught, it was just like frustrating. But then I just said, fuck it, and I played it like an action game, and. Uh, I actually had fun. Chairmaster is telling me to use my CQC, which is probably oh, yeah. a good idea. <laughs> Slam people into rocks. <laughs> Snake, maybe you should try using your CQC. Whoa. Now, now he's asleep where he normally spawns. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, How do I pick this guy up? Action button. You sit on his face. Circle. 
No, no, it's not. Shoot a bullet. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah. All right. Here. Uh, oh, uh, put this guy in the grass. Nobody finds him. There you go. I hope yep. I don't see his floating Zs. And some nice ammo that I don't get. Okay. It's fine. Don't need it. Oh, yeah. Like, there's... No. It was a huge change in this game to have suddenly have no radar at all. Mm -hmm. And they and they I think, I think that's why I ended up like not liking it as much as the other yeah. ones. That's I think that's probably why I liked it more because it was it, less overt. It was more yeah. strictly about making sure you're no one's around and being super super sneaky. Mm -hmm. I, just I loved it like... so much. The day I got it, I beat it. I I did not sleep that night. I just wow. went through the entire this night and whole played game? the shit out of it. So. You know what? I the last time I played through, I I played like each one of the games once, um, and then like, what the fuck? See, <laughs> what was that? See, that's why this version of the game where you don't have the behind the back camera is a bunch of bullshit because stuff like that happens. Ah, oh, what? How can you still this see me? Well. I'm they fucking camouflaged, well you serious. dick. Ah, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> 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 Wah! Kick him while he's down. Squat. Yeah. <laughs> Throw him into an alligator. Knife, knife, knife. Wait. Uh. Knife. <laughs> knife, knife. Oh. Come back, dick. Knife, 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 you. knife. Oh, cause you can do this. This is a CQC weapon, so I can go like uh. Uh. I go like. I get punched in the face, then I go like, oh, I use my CQC on you, ugh, CQC. Or something, I run behind your back, and then I CQC. <laughs> Snake, you're doing awfully. Snake, Snake. Snake can Oh, man, read? fucking chair master over here is being a dick. He's like, fight those shit guards, you're on normal. You're on, you're on easy, easy baby, baby. mode. <laughs> Fuck you. Snake, guy got goo goo. <laughs> Snake, this is a solo sneaking mission. Do you know what that means? Yes, <laughs> I do. Everyone is being a dick to you right now. <laughs> I'm out of here, guys. Fuck all your, your shit. <laughs> The dick normal mode is easy ass. baby mode. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> dick. Oh, come on. Solid burn, though. Solid burn by Chairmaster. It's not. It's not a solid burn. I think the first time I played all these games, I played on, like, easy or very easy. I went nuts. Oh, no, dude. You got to play on normal. Yeah, thank you for that. I realize that now. <laughs> I mean, you gotta at least play on easy baby mode, aka normal. <laughs> it's 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 so restrictive that they make you only look in first person when you're hiding in the grass, but it's so great. It works so well. Yeah, that's why. I uh, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I really like the game, because it was restricted, but in all the right ways. It was like, it just gave you just enough. Oh, fuck off. No. <laughs> no, no, it's not me. It's not I think I see someone. fuck. I see, uh, I see him. This game is hard. This Multiply. is a difficult game. Yeah, the first time I played through, I basically, if I saw anyone, I just killed them immediately. <laughs> This guy's telling me to use CQC, but like, I think there's like a bunch of cool shit that you can do with CQC that I don't know how to do any of that stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you keep running at them instead of stopping near them when you're doing CQC, you like grab them and flip them over and they get knocked out. I think. Forget. <laughs> uh, oh my god, Squad says, it's because you spit in the jungle. <laughs> yep. That was one of the most annoying things about Metal Gear Solid 1. I died a few times, but every single time, they fucking flipped out. Okay, uh, Snack. Chairmaster says you, uh, you hold circle. You push forward and hold circle. I'm saying this uh, to the viewers who can see it in the chat, so it doesn't matter, but... Or hold zero without pushing forward, and you'll grab them and hold them. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I want that. The 
the one change they did make in the HD versions was to not make the aiming inverted anymore. And, or if it ever was, I forget. But they also made the confirm button X instead of circle. Because if you remember that, Metal Gear Solid was like the last franchise on the planet to still make you use circle as the confirm button. Yep. That was kind of ridiculous in Metal Gear Solid, trying to play that on the PlayStation 3. It's like you go to the menu and everything's X, but then you go back to the game and it's circle. It's like, wait, hold on. Wait, did that happen? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Huh. I think. Chat help. <laughs> um, now the, the, a few years ago when I replayed the series, the way it happened was I... Okay, how do I get back up? Okay, you hit the let action. go button. Okay, I <laughs> hit action. <laughs> Last time I hit X and I dropped off and died. Uh, I, 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 down I downloaded the digital version of Metal Gear Solid 1, which I, I had not I had only played Twin Snakes up to that point, and I think I uh, will... Oh! Uh. <laughs> you cold-blooded motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I remember waking up on a Saturday and being like, I'm going to play this other game, but oh, first, you know what? Why don't I play like an hour of Metal Gear Solid? And instead, I just spent the entire day playing Metal Gear Solid and beat it all in the first day, and then immediately started on Metal Gear Solid 2, and then finished that the next day, and immediately started on 3 and finished it the next day, and then played 4, like, over the course of the next week. Dude, these games, man, they do something to you. Yeah, I don't know what it is. They're also relatively short, too. Take that, dirt. Yeah, fuck your shit, dirt. You know what I need, though? I need this, uh... I need this mushroom. I need our mushroom C. Oh, yeah, do you increase your stamina by doing the push-ups, or is that only Metal Gear Solid 2? Uh... Oh, pull-ups, not push-ups, pull-ups. No, I don't think you do that in this one. Oh, okay. Chairmaster, make me feel bad about being wrong about that. That's MGS2. You can see the disdain in his uh, his two-word response. He's furious with you. <laughs> oh. I can't wait until the Metal Gear Solid fanbase and the Silent Hill fanbase merge. <laughs> it's never going to happen, dude. I've reached the abandoned factory. Uh, office, supposedly we can only hope. This place is a dump. Oh, Sokolov. Not to be confused with Shalashaska. God, why would they? Why? Why would they get rid of David Hayter? His fucking voice is so good. That was the most. That that was one of the things that rubbed me the wrong way the most about the Game Awards was when they introduced Keith, Keith for Sutherland is like the fucking like here's the voice of Snake. Oh really? Yeah. Ugh. They should be holding him in That's a room. That's terrible. It's like yeah, okay, sure. Got it. I mean, like. Be careful. Like, was there yes for the three lines of BO that he recorded for Ground Zeroes? There was a bunch, I think. Was there not? Bunch of grunts and groans. I thought there was a lot of dialogue. I mean, it's a Metal Gear game, right? Oh, yeah. Ground Zeroes like, had quite a lot. Listen, I, I think Kiefer Sutherland did, like, a surprisingly good job, if I remember correctly, but why why would you not with David Hayter? It's because they want Hollywood recognition. That's, the, that's literally the only reason why they would do it. I can But he's like the most recognizable voice in video games, practically. I mean, maybe at this yeah. point, Nolan North, but I mean, his his voice was so recognizable and so attached to the identity of the character of Snake. Snake and Solid Snake, the two. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand. It, it's a publicity holding... grab is what it is. Like, that's that's 100% what that decision was. Yeah, I mean, think about what he did with uh, Silent Hills and um, uh, Walking Dead guy. Fucking what's his name? Mm -hmm. He's just trying to get, you know, big names in his games so that, you know, they get more recognition. But I thought, I thought Kojima's always talked about how much he likes David Hayter's voice, too. Like, I wonder, uh, I wonder if I there's really... something about David Hayter that they don't like and don't want to work with him anymore. Sometimes that stuff creeps into the game-making process, but 
is anyone holding out hope that he like comes in in any sort of capacity for the next uh, Metal Gear game? Oh, like, there's maybe there there's still people holding out hope that uh, Ground Zeroes is like a an elaborate hoax and that it's actually gonna be David Hayter. Like, <laughs> like there there was actually a a sizable contingent of people that thought that the announcement that they were going with Kiefer Sutherland was a hoax. Mm. And and even I was like, I mean, it's not outside the realm. I mean, it could be a hoax, right? It's, I mean, if anyone's yeah. gonna do some bullshit like that, it's Kojima. I mean, remember when they right. announced the Phantom Pain? They oh, didn't Lord. even announce it as a Metal Gear game. They announced it as a game being produced by Moby Dick Studios and the yeah, which fucking didn't exist. And then he did that interview with Keeley wearing that yeah. bandage mask. Yes. Oh my god! Uh, Fuck that whole thing. That was so. It was ob- so dumb. It was. It was, so, it was so like just blatantly. It was such a huge fuck you to anybody that was paying attention. I mean, I don't know if it was a fuck you, but it was just kind of like. It was the least convincing ruse of all time. I think it was kind of like, here's how stupid we think you are. Yeah, may- maybe you're right. I don't know. It was. And it also bothered me that Keeley went along with it. And then he went along with it for so long. Like, that's not, a that's not like, an advertising spot that you're doing anymore. That is you actively lying to the people that well, patron your website. I think it was just, it was supposed to be a fun thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I, t- I take that kind of stuff P seriously. Get that snake. Why? Whoa. whoa. You seem really bent out of shape about this. I just thought it was a lame ruse, like it was totally it, it unconvincing. Was, it was a lame ruse. I'm more, I'm more, uh, I am more disapprove of Keeley's involvement than I do with Kojima wanting to do it because it totally seems like the kind of thing that Kojima would do. Um, yeah, now that you mention it, though, having a, someone blatantly lie like that, I don't know about how I feel about that. Yeah, because it's like a you know, don't you have, like, a member sort of, of the, a, the media. I mean, like, yeah, like, ostensibly you've got a member of the gaming press who, you know, and whether or not Keeley qualifies as that is... Yeah, is I don't know debate, about that, but... but um, yeah. You've got someone who is in charge of presenting information to an audience, and they knowingly participate in a, a ah. deception of their audience for months on end as part of a publicity stunt. Uh, I I think I would, if I was asked, I would go along with it because it's Kojima and I'm like, yeah, I want to be a part of a silly Kojima ruse. That actually sounds like fun. In this case, I think it was lame and poorly handled, but it's, to be part of a Kojima ruse sounds like fun to me. Yeah, but when when you are a person in, in Keeley's position, I don't think that that's a thing you're, you should get to do. Oh, thanks, Ray. Don't worry, it's coming out uh, hopefully before Christmas, so we'll have fun. See, I was convincing this guy with Petrovic, I think, or Petrovic. I think Petrovic no, is a different dude. character. This is Sokolov. That's Sokolov. You must be Sokolov. <laughs> you must be, uh, you must be voiced by Brian Cummings. <laughs> Hold on, oh, let me man. let me finish burning all this evidence. <laughs> I love how Snake is just like, uh, yeah, okay, you can do that, uh, whatever. You have to admit, you have to admit that Metal Gear Solid 3 was worth it simply because of the outtakes. Outtakes? Do you not know about the Metal Gear Solid 3 outtakes? I mean, if I ever did, I don't remember. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> Oh no, this is a fucking travesty. <laughs> it means he's a man of his word. Man, like there are a lot of things that don't grab me about the story of this game, but the whole like the last cutscene of this game is amazing. The whole thing at the end with the stuff and the music. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Never heard of him. He's a member of we have to watch the secret theater stuff. Stock footage, huh? Ever since the <sighs> crisis two years ago, Khrushchev has been crisis, see? Says it right here. 
Despite resistance and criticism from the <laughs> Whoa, weird. And the what? Authorities, the, here, I'm, here's a link to what I was talking about. But look at the, the uh, URL name. Cultural policies has put him in a precarious position. Huh. And on top of that. Uh, totally random. And it's got your name in it, Kyle. <laughs> Wait, what? Assassination. I've linked it in the uh, Skype chat. Oh. Wow. The, the YouTube random URL. <laughs> the, YouTube, the YouTube link... The YouTube like video URL ID starts with Kyle. That's pretty yeah. funny. Oh shit! I gotta load up Twitch. Hold on. Hold on, Chair Master. So don't don't yell at me. <laughs> Keith has a uh, has never played. Um, he's played some of Twin Snakes, but nothing else from Metal Gear Solid. And uh, I've wanted for the longest time to do a, a Let's Play Metal Gear series with him of like play all the Metal Gears, and he's just not interested. Mm. Why? Well, first off, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> he, that's the thing. It's like I wanna, I wanna do it, and I could force him to do it. Like he'll just go along with what if I just, <laughs> like yeah. if I just say, no, nah, this is what we're gonna do. He'll be like, I think that's dumb, but whatever. But yeah. if I just start playing Metal Gear Solid and he's not into it. Like, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> it seems like a thing you would really like. They wouldn't need that many I, men just to it seems Keith. dumb in the way that Keith likes for things to be dumb. They I think so, but also Keith Hulk is Captain very Hulk. unpredictable in, in things that he hates. Like, there's some mm. things he just hates really irrationally. Though I guess technically he did play some of Twin Snakes and said that he liked it, but I don't know. I don't get how you can how he can play he can sit through like fucking Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric and he, he says he poo poos fucking Metal Gear Solid. Well, I th I I mean, it's like he doesn't want to sit through Sonic Boom, but people will watch it, so that's why we do it. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a different thing a little bit. Is that so? Well, I think people would watch Metal Gear Solid too. Um Especially considering how fucking, like, it's great. It's one of those great games where it's great, but it's also, like, fucking weird. Mm hmm. Wait, uh, what is Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's awesome while simultaneously being fucking bonkers. Major. You know, like Silent Hill and shit. Sokolov is safe with me. Yeah, there's. He's doing fine. No injuries. It's so impossible to define those games. We'll rendezvous with you there. Roger. What about the sentries? I managed to get past them. I see. What about the bomb? Yawn. I hate Codex. <laughs> I think I think that was my uh, my the thing I liked the least about this game is I feel I felt like all the Codex conversations were way longer than even in previous games and were way less interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the action scenes though are much much better than uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. Like this right here. It's just... <laughs> I love it. And I, I think I was predisposed to be unhappy about Metal Gear Solid 3 right off the bat because they had the... The, like the big drop about the Patriots at the very <laughs> end of MGS2 and then the next game was a prequel instead of a continuation of, of that. Mm-hmm. And then even when they did get back to that time period, they like skipped ahead like eight years or something. This is this is going on for a while, Jesus. Good job, Snake. I mean, to be fair, it happens to me all the time, so <laughs> He's allowed one or two. So this is the legendary boss. Huh? He thinks I'm the boss? Is he dumb? <laughs> you and your tiny, tiny gun. What's a through soldier doing here? Come on, you could have at least gotten Soldier. fake Russian accents. 
it's always driven me crazy that Ocelot was Russian, but that he has, like, this weird kind of, like, somewhat, like, in here he's just got, like, a standard he's American the accent, command. and then in, when yeah. he's older he just has, like, some That's kind of, like, Ocelot. southern accent, but more, like, cowboy Don't movie accent yet. or something. It's so weird. Sokolov is ours. Now get out of here. Is Keith like Dragon Ball Z? Ocelot. Never lets his uh, I like Dragon Ball Z. He definitely what? liked it at some point. Yeah, yeah. Keith likes Dragon Ball Z. You know, I don't know what his opinions of it are now, but there was a time when he was he was definitely into it. Dude, he's. I think you would actually like this game. I think you would actually like Metal Gear Solid games. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this guy was uh, Adam. Was he posing as a member of Gru, or was he actually one, but that it was like his cover? <laughs> I feel like the, the Metal Gear 3 storyline was always the most confusing to me with the whole thing with like Adam and, and Eva and yeah. the Patriots and the, what was it like? What was it called? Like the legacy, the, was it the Philosopher's Legacy? Yeah. I think, I uh, think I didn't even understand until much later when I read a wiki, wiki article that like the philosophers and the patriots are two different entities or was that explained in four or something? I, so I think it was explained, explained in three. <gasps> it's <laughs> it's weird to say this but I think parts of Metal Gear Solid 3 was when the story started to get overly complicated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, This water's got too much water in it. Are you? He's like, nah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he fucking just. Fucking part. <laughs> I fucking love that part. <laughs> so ridiculous. That's why he's called Ocelot because he randomly meows. <laughs> Come on, you can't. Like, I don't gotta... understand why they had two games with Ocelot where it's just what he's called, and then in the third one they felt the need to make him meow. Like, I don't get it. Uh, didn't he do something to call his soldiers in Metal Gear Solid 1 where it was like a cat call? Or no, I, no. I could have sworn I remembered that. Your stupid Russian gun got jammed, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Leave it. Meow. Meow. <laughs> and here comes revolver puppy dog. Woof woof. This just goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Like. I know that's Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid's thing is really long cutscenes, but as someone who just saw all of Metal Gear Solid One and a good portion of Two, like they weren't like this. No, they weren't. This is weird. I mean, they weren't as long as this, but Metal Gear Solid One definitely had some weird shit. Oh yeah, I mean it was weird and there was action and stuff like that, but. At this, at this at this point in the series, this is crazily long, even for Metal Gear. Yeah. <laughs> Lumberjack Bonanza says, Ocelot spits at Snake, forgetting the first rule of survival on the battlefield. <laughs> First place, you tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's more of a revolver technique. You filthy American dog! A revolver, huh? Maybe I'll remember that. that was <laughs> Maybe I'll give that a shot. 
I can't remember, and, but I think he shows up again in Peace Walker. And thus ended the reign of Tiny Gun Ocelot. <sighs> he fainted. Oh. <sighs> I can't wait to see Ocelot again in MGS5, though. Oh, totally. I just can't wait to have a buddy who is a dog with an eye patch. Wait, what? Do you, you don't know about this? I'm no. Here. Snake, you all right? Oh my God! There's a dog with an eye patch in that game. Guys were after so hey, a chairmaster, help us out. They were I need a, I need a link to that. Named Bulgan. A group. Uh, a group. Oh. <laughs> Let's get out of here before these guys wake up. See, this is why you gotta get on Hitbox, man. If I were, if we were on Hitbox right now, I could take the link, oh, post it in the chat, and you'd be able right. to see it immediately. You're right. Uh, where do I go now? What the? F I mean, do it. Chairmaster's on it. Map. Uh, I just go back, right? I'm not. Yeah, destination. Okay, got it. Got it. Good. Get it, got it good. Also, Chairmaster, I'm having a tough time finding this, but I could have sworn that Os Revolver Ocelot does some sort of like, I don't know, like a meow or something in the first game. No. Am I misremembering that? Yeah, or? you are. Uh -huh. okay. I'm fairly certain that that never happens. Yes. The best crew has to offer. Spitznaz. They're coming for me. You know, it's just in the other games it was just a code name in the same way like Snake is. He doesn't do anything snake like, it's just his name. You know, he doesn't like he doesn't <laughs> he stick out his tongue and, and hiss or whatever it is. <laughs> Although that would have made the game so much yeah. better. Chairmaster says no meow in MGS one. Aw. Thank you, yeah. uh thank That's you, Metal Gear Master. There's there it is. There's the Shadow Hog. <laughs> Nuclear IRBM. It can launch nuclear missiles from that kind of terrain. Oh, yes. And without support from friendly units. A nuclear equipped tank capable of operating solo. I love this farce in Metal Gear that, like, uh, is that thing finished? terrain no, is like is the only problem only with nuclear ICBMs. Mm -hmm. right. Like, they're intercontinental. You can launch them from anywhere. That's their whole thing. We have these things called rockets. We don't necessarily need robots with legs, and that be a big deal. Now, we have this bomb that can wipe a city off the map, but the problem is, can we launch it from a hill? There's a small ravine between our base and the rest of the world. We just haven't been able to circumnavigate it. I wanted to see my wife and child again in America. Please. Take me to America quickly. I liked that uh, this one didn't have a Metal Gear; it had the Shago Hod because yeah. Big it. Boss was supposed Let's to be the one that makes Metal Gear, and they mm -hmm. fucked that up in Metal Gear Solid because there's someone else that makes the first Metal Gear. Uh, Keith says he's got an earache. Mm. He's not sure oh. that he wants to stream with us. Um, okay, I'm streaming Metal Gears right now with well, maybe that's Bob for the best. and another guy. <laughs> maybe that's for the best because if you do end up doing like a full-on like LP of these games, then yeah. maybe uh, it'd be better to have him in the dark. It, it's it's funny that I've been so uh, getting back into Metal Gear. Someone just randomly commented on one of our videos the other day and said, uh, like, oh, John said something about Metal Gear Solid 4 and it reminded me how great those games are. Would you ever consider uh, doing a Let's Play series of the Metal Gear Solid series? And I just mm. responded by saying, I am literally always considering this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she has the headband. Yep, yeah. she totally does. God, I love her as an enemy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Wonderful. What are you doing here? And then the ending? I, yeah. Uh, it, it recently occurred to me that the ending of Metal Gear Solid 3 is like the reverse of the ending of Metal Gear 1. It's also like the best ending yeah. of oh, yeah, it's any amazing. Metal Gear game. It's completely amazing. Fucking but, bees! Virtuous mission over! I gotta go home! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bees! Oh, hornets. Oh, whoa. <laughs> that guy's fucking ridiculous. Everyone's ridiculous. I don't think I ever actually liked any of like the named bosses since like the first Metal Gear Solid. You yeah. don't like Captain B's? I always felt they were way too ridiculous. I <laughs> here's the thing. You know how one of them is called the Sorrow? Yeah. Yeah. I just just like within the last week or two realized this entire time, because you know how he like dies or something, and then he's like kind of a ghost or something weird like that. Yeah. Um, I forgot this whole time and thought that he was called the Pain and not the Sorrow. And so when the game Metal Gear Solid Five was called the Phantom Pain, I kept thinking it was going to be all about him, and I just remembered that's not him. And so I, now I have no idea what that game is about. But I think I think the bees guy is the Pain, right? Yeah. Yeah. The oh, the bees. end. Of course, the end. Yep. It's time we go to oh, man. Hell itself. Her voice actor is really good. <laughs> I'm made of bees. Let's fight. <laughs> 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 yeah, there he is, the is sorrow. Yeah, I am. The concepts for the pain, the end, and the sorrow are just... I like their fights, especially the sorrow's fight. Because oh. I was a big dumb idiot yeah. while I was playing the game and just killed everyone. Yes! The, I did <laughs> so, that too. So when I got there, and you just walk through this river of like every dead body of the people that you killed, for me, the first time I played this game, it literally took so long that I had to go and look up a guide because I thought that there was something I like I thought it was just looping endlessly and there was something I needed to do and I realized like oh no this is just literally the countless guards that I've killed thus far <laughs> every single one oh man boss what is this I'm defecting to the Soviet Union Sokolov is a little gift for my new hosts Coilless nuclear warheads. Perfect. <laughs> we don't even need the Shagawad anymore. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we can shoot this from a helicopter. <laughs> oh, we've got a helicopter. Recoilless nuclear missile. You shouldn't have. Are we taking him with us? No, this one is still just a child. The perfect still gift for any dad and grad in your life. <laughs> He has not yet found an emotion. Merry Christmas, Soviet that. Union. What are you talking? <laughs> Just smacks her in the head when he turns around. Think you can pull the trigger? Ow. Ow. I, he hasn't found an not emotion fair. to carry into battle. Huh? I'm still impressed with the um, the way that those be those hornets handled the uh, helicopter's uh, wind uh, the way. Mm -hmm. Where they was shoving the air all around. Ooh! Yeah, no. Oh, why? You've seen my face. We can't let him live. Well, I saw your face. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to anymore. If Khrushchev finds out about this, we're finished. <laughs> Wait. He's my apprentice. I'll take care of him. But I want to punch someone with bullets. No, I thought his deal was that he uh, heated up the bullets with his electricity and then they would fire out of his hand. Still, you can punch someone and then fire them. I guess so. Not to mention they're technically bullets, so anything he hits, he's punching with a bullet. 
Well, let's talk about the technicalities of the ridiculousness of Metal Gear Solid. And... Ah, <laughs> oh, Barra, Gua Barra. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I got your bandana. <laughs> Infinite ammo. The new blood has been rejected. <laughs> Imagine doing all that with a broken arm. That would be terrible. Yeah. Are we done here? Now, onto Sokolov's research facility. Shagohad is ours. Drift away. My place is with them now. She's got one of those expensive harnesses, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, Squad says, Kojima would make a great G.I. Joe game. Isn't that basically what Metal Gear Solid is? Yep. I, uh... In one of the episodes of Metal Gear Scanlan, Drew pointed out that it seems like Metal Gear Solid is basically like a samurai parable. Mm. And I think it makes so much sense when you think about how they talk about soldiers in relation to their countries in that game. Like it makes like they always talk like they they talk about Snake like he's a mercenary or something. It's like that's not really how Snake, the military works. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, and it's all this stuff about how, you know, like, during the Cold War, they needed all these soldiers, but, you know, now there's no place for them and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's that's pretty heavily, uh, heavily what the story is in uh, 5, if memory serves. Like, mm -hmm. it picks up after Peace Walker, so all that stuff comes into play. Still not an excuse to have a, a bomb in someone's vagina. Yep. I mean, it would be the last place you'd look. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. First, we've got to get you patched up. Okay. Okay. Just do me do me one favor, Kyle. Okay. First, open the survival bureau. Get a PlayStation Four. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually multiple. I oh, okay. I have one. Okay. Ground Zeroes. Get it. I I have played it before, not on PS4, but. I Record it. Keith's reaction to that scene. Okay. And just just upload it without any context. Just I want to see what he thinks. They raped oh, man, peace, guys. Do you get it? Her name means peace. It's like they raped peace. <sighs> oh, I didn't actually fucking pay attention to the order that you're supposed to do these things in. Or maybe it doesn't matter. And you just go like, uh, fucking. I don't think there's an order to it. Disinfect. Uh. Oh, I think there might be a word there. <laughs> Suture and then disinfect. Siptic. Boom, there we go. Uh, disinfect. Cigar, cigar. <laughs> cigar. Didn't, okay. Nope. <laughs> suture, suture, suture. Suture, guys. Suture, come on. Uh, yeah, you might want to remove the bullet before suturing it. Yeah, there's no order for this stuff. Fracture no, bones. just seal it right up in there. Splint that shit. Also, <laughs> maybe disinfected? I don't know. Nope. Okay. Uh, bandage. Suture. Suture and then stick the knife in to get uh, the bullet out. Splint. Bandage. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Disinfect. I mean, this, you know, it kind of goes on a bit, but, you know, it's, it's still cool. This was a neat idea. I don't know if it was executed on a hundred percent as as good as it maybe could have, but it was it was pretty cool. It's like the Chows from Sonic Adventure. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're for, but they're there now. 
Oh no! 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 Ah! 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 I bet he wished he looked like Mel Gibson now. <laughs> Snake is so fucking hardcore. <laughs> I just want more David Hayter screaming with an echo effect applied to it. Mm -hmm. ah! Craft your way to not bleeding out. Good job, Snake. <laughs> I'm coming to get you now. Just stay where you are. We'll Fuck you too. <laughs> Can you set it up? A recovery balloon? Yeah. You don't know about the Fulton recovery system? I do, but I thought that I didn't realize that was in use at this point. What? I mean, is this a real thing? I don't even know if it's actually real. Uh, it, it was never implemented, but it was okay. a thing that people that someone had come up with. It's not yeah. a really big recovery balloon. The Fulton recovery uh, system is uh, in Metal Gear Solid 3 a couple times, but it is all over the fucking place in Peace Walker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Because uh, much like Portable Ops, Portable Ops was all about recruiting like an army. So you could mm -hmm. actually, um, you would like knock guards out and then you would drag them over to your van like a crazy creepo. <laughs> and then like they would basically be like turned to your side. Um, but you would have to drag them all the way through the level to the, the truck where you started. But in Peace Walker, you just put like a Fulton balloon on them anytime you capture them and they just get picked up. Yeah, and that's what you do in Metal Gear Solid 5 too. Mm -hmm. Memory serves. Oh, is there more get... of that stuff? Yeah, it's all over the place. Mm. You can fault and recover like people or tanks or sheep or whatever you feel oh, like. Oh, that's yeah. right, Jesus. That's how you, that's how you actually get the the dog. Uh, you find it and uh, you slap it to a balloon. Yeah, I, <laughs> like that stuff is okay, but I feel like it, it seems like Kojima has definitely decided that Metal Gear Solid has gone in some direction, and it's not a direction I'm particularly thrilled about. Like, I I don't I don't know that I need to have like these mechanics of like recruiting an army and stuff. Yeah. And and sheep I don't know. <laughs> but I'll, I'll give Peace Walker another go. I'll give Phantom uh, or not a Excellent. Ground Zeroes another go. A great success. Great Thanks success. Her this is in Kazakhstan, right? right? Both Sokolov and the Shagohad. Might be. Sokolov and Shagod. That hair, man. Yeah, the trust effects in this game are not very good. <laughs> what are we going to do with the girl? Who is she? Apparently she's Sokolov's woman. Lumberjack Bonanza says, in MGS5, other people have achieved Fulton technology and attempt to steal your dudes too. What? Oh no. <gasps> And you have to counter their Fulton technology. That's Not crazy. So fast, my dear. A kiss of death. You KGB. We may be able to use her. Shall we take her back to the base? Perhaps we should. We have no further use for Sokolov's research facility. Research? I, I gave this marvelous new toy what? a try. Colonel, even if they are our enemies, they're still our countrymen. But, it but it'll be, be fun. <laughs> we are friends. I mean, I think we can all relate to that. Like, if you could nuke something and blame it on someone else, wouldn't you? Hmm. 
Colonel. Hey, don't invoke the name of, of the Alamo for your crazy nuclear thing. <clears throat> Russians be crazy. That's the message here. Yeah. And Snake's dead. <laughs> Snake? Snake! Snake, you died of radiation poisoning. Master Miller chimes in and is like, never get hit by a nuclear bomb in the field. <laughs> You'll die. Be sure not to spit when you're radioactive. Survival tip number one, never be blasted by a nuclear missile. Survival tip two, don't get shot. Survival tip three, breathe. Do you think this is, the radiation that he just received is responsible for why he's such a, uh, an amazing soldier? That's probably it. It's basically like Captain America. Yeah. Or the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Or any of the Fantastic Four. Here we go. Ah, uh, let's just soak it in. Let's turn that up a bit. In the, I was talking to Jordan about this earlier. In the HD edition of MGS3, they just make this video play anytime you turn the game on because they know that's what you want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. All save slots are at the part where you climb up the ladder and the music plays. Yes, Lumberjack Bonanza? How can I help you? <laughs> Kyle! I can screw with this? He says I can screw oh, with he's, it. He's trying to trick you into skipping it. What? No, I'm doing stuff. What is this? What am I doing? Oh, I didn't know you could oh, do yeah, that. Oh, yeah. You could draw on it and stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, that. shit. Oh, my God. I never oh. knew this. Look Dude, at these weird camo parachutes the, I'm making. Look at these. If you haven't seen the secret theater, you need to watch it right now. Holy shit. I'm still in a dream. Oh, I can just make her whisper Snake Eater whenever I want. <laughs> yeah, you eat that fish. Yeah. Uh, I want to play this game right now. Just do it. It's only 15 bucks, Bob. I already have it. Even the HD one? I have it. The, yeah, the HD collection. Oh, I that's got right. it to play. Uh, uh, what was the other thing in that? Peace boop, Walker. Boop, 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 boop. In my time, there'll be no one Remix! <laughs> Remix! Oh, that's right. oh, I can change it. Okay, here we go. Different planes. Planes, 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 planes. <laughs> Sickle and hammers everywhere. All right. Oh, man. A plus. Maybe, maybe one of the best uh, theme songs for anything ever. I'm trying to think of one that's even comparable. Intros? Yeah. Theme songs. Oh, theme intros songs? Intros with theme songs and stuff. Well, are we talking themes or are we talking intros? I'm talking theme songs. Currently flying over the Arctic Ocean. Can't. Altitude 30, Can't. Feet. Soviet airspace. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Prince of Persia Warrior Within had that Godsmack song. <laughs> I mean, the other obvious example is Metal Gear Solid 2 has a fucking amazing theme. 
Yes, no, yes, I've, yes, yes. I've actually been uh, going around just humming that song for like a week like a lunatic. <laughs> just going around like... Yeah. Okay, let's narrow the focus then to theme songs with lyrics. Well, um, Silent Hill Downpour had uh, a theme song sung by Korn. <laughs> right? Forgot uh, about that. I actually love both of the uh, Kingdom Hearts theme songs, intro themes. Those also, mm. actually, those are, so are both contenders, I feel like, for a theme song and nice intro the with the theme song. Could you do me a favor and tell the suits about visiting hours? The intros to those games are amazing. With them assaulting me day and night with their questions. God. Oh, yeah, someone says uh, Sonic <laughs> Colors. <laughs> yep. <laughs> actually, <laughs> but it's According to Sonic the Adventure for real, though. Open your heart. Yep. That's some hot shit. Oh, that yeah. Is, That's uh, the best song ever written. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> I would actually fucking love if that game was like available in like uh, I mean that song was available in like a Guitar Hero or a rock band. I would love to play yes? the guitar on that. If you fucking rad, that would be amazing. What was where, the song from Mike Sonic Mike? Adventure Two? Was that City Chase? City Escape. Yeah, there's, there's City Escape. There's City Escape. Was, yeah. I don't think that's theme, but I fucking love that song. Running around at the speed of sound. <laughs> got places uh, to go. Gotta my follow shoes. my rainbow. <laughs> Oh, I'm an idiot, but I love that song yeah. so much. I mean, there's also like a hardcore morning, a song for Sonic Adventure 2 also. Ray by Day says, you gotta rule out Crush 40 or this is no contest. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yesterday, the White House received an unexpected call. Nicole just pulled into the, into the driveway. Mm. Yes, I hear you, Mr. Chairman. I think I might be nearing my limits as far as Christian. as President my Johnson. stream capability goes yeah. for tonight. Oh, really? That's right. A few days ago, yeah. one of our This is what happens anytime anybody goes back to Metal Gear Solid 3 is they play the virtuous mission and they get to the part where the game starts and they're like, "I think I'm good." Uh, <laughs> probably good. <laughs> well, if you don't stop now, you're never gonna. Yeah, that's basically it. It's either it's either here or the end of the game. Right. There is no in between. To you. Hi. In retaliation, I have placed our armed forces on secondary alert. You know what we should Depending obviously switch to the no the choice, other the other the Cold War involved alert. thriller, Goldeneye. <laughs> With the help of your predecessor, I was able to. I'll tell you what you need to do. Okay, all right, we fucking get it. Are the Russians going to be helping us? You need to watch the, the outtakes KGB from Metal Gear Solid 3 because I am sad, so that you sad know, that you haven't seen it yet. I'm sure I've seen it at some point. Oh, hey. That's hey, what's up? They've also put us in touch with a couple of insiders. Insiders? <sighs> there was a defection in September 19... God damn it. You just made me... Re reminded me of all of the weird sexist bullshit from Metal Gear Solid 4. Uh-huh. And all two, all the and one, and this game. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. Why yeah. Just basically all of them. Like, I replayed um, the beginning of Metal Gear Solid 2, and the part where you get in the locker, and you yep. look at the picture of the lady. Like, Kissing? Yep. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, I forgot that these games are weird like that. Nicole's here. Hi, hey. Nicole. They say hi. Hi, Nicole. It's Bob and Jordan. Oh, she sounds tired. Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear 2. No solid. <laughs> you, are you saying this isn't the History Channel? There are parts of this game that just play stock footage that would be on the History Channel. This Nothing to do with Hitler, though. Me. Loud and clear. Glad to see you landed safely. I got blown pretty far off target. Snake, let's go over your mission objectives one more time. <laughs> mission objective one, don't die. <laughs> Find out what's happened to the Shagahod, then destroy it. And finally, eliminate the boss. Don't step on the N64. This mission will be codenamed Operation Snake Eater. Because I'll be taking on the boss in our Cobra unit, right? Don't forget about Colonel Volkin. I'm not a hired killer. Don't step know, on my N64 the is demand. the demand. motto of Nerd Texas. It wasn't just a request. What's it to us if the Khrushchev regime is threatened by the Colonel and his faction? 
If supporting the current regime helps us avoid a nuclear exchange, like, then that's what know, we'll five do. To six. And what are the CIA's demands? Our priorities are the rescue of Sokolov and the destruction of the Shagamal. Roger that, Major Tom. Hold on, Snake. What wet. now? I'm changing my code name. It turns out Tom wasn't the most auspicious choice. What do you mean? Well, the truth is, when I chose my code name, I picked the wrong one. The wrong one? Did you ever see the movie The Great Escape? It came out last year. Oh, I must have missed that one. Anyway. It's based on a true story about prisoners who escaped from a POW camp in Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. The prisoners dig three tunnels as part of their plan. Unfortunately, but the Nazis find two of the tunnels apparently. before they're finished. It was super prisoners hot up here. Escaping by using the last remaining tunnel. The names of those three tunnels mm -hmm. were Dick, Harry, and Tom. I don't want Jordan. To leave. I get it. You use Jordan, the you're gonna leave. The tunnel they escaped in. Yeah, I think I gotta eat food. Bring you good luck. Yeah, it's like exactly it's right. it's pee late. That's a terrible but, excuse. But, <laughs> but I got the name wrong. The one they escaped him was Harry. Tom was one of the unlucky tunnels. It was discovered I by the Nazis before up. it was finished. I watched the movie again just to make sure. In fact, I even ordered the actual film from the Nothing. movie company. Yeah, it doesn't sound like yeah. the greatest name to use. So what should I call you? This conversation is you know, let's just use five zero. minutes too long. We've been doing all along. All right, then. Major That's zero. everything in this game. We'll start over from square. <laughs> From square Major, zero. should I like get started with my mission? Zero, no, I've got to talk to you about this movie I just I saw. Paramedic is with us again on this mission. Snake, is have you ever played Neopets? I I do still think that paramedic is a really dumb, great code name. It's, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> All right, I think that might be uh, might be all she wrote for uh, what's what's the face? Unless what's he, his woodland face? He just want to play as Raiden. Doesn't doesn't really look like Raiden, but nah, uh, the fra the frame's too stocky. Yeah, I guess it ha it has to fit on Snake's body. So, mm -hmm. thank you guys for joining me in my uh, taking a peek into my Metal Gear K hole. Huh. Yeah, thank you, you know, for having me. That was Nicole a good way says to hi it. also. <laughs> or she says bye. Sorry, that makes more sense. She says bye because everyone's <laughs> leaving. <laughs> That's the hi, time bye. when people say bye. And cool, it was fun. Hey, maybe some more later. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? It's... Hey, hit me up. I will. I am down. Maybe we don't even need Keith. We'll just play Metal Gear whenever. I don't know. Fuck yeah. Sound who, whatever. You should put on the riding mask, and all of the woodland creatures just attack you. Like every <laughs> single one. It's like the reverse uh, Snow White. I'm gonna find out what a frog sounds like. <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> oh wait. Oh, you did have a radar a little bit. He doesn't but have a radar. He has a motion D. A motion right. D, and then it, uh, it, it would pick up the, the animals as well. So it wasn't super reliable. That's mm -hmm. okay. So that's cool. You did have some stuff. AP sensor. I don't remember what that is. That tells you if there's a member of the Associated Press anywhere nearby. <laughs> uh, uh, take the death pill. Take it. All right. That's uh. That's all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. No see, ya, see you later. Bye.